Hmm. It oh, is up right now. It's, it's the diffraction of light against the atmosphere because blue spreads faster hmm. than red. It oh, is up right now. It's, it's, it's the diffraction of light this. against the <laughs> atmosphere because blue spreads faster hmm. than. Why is still up relative to our position? Because if you go down, you can still reach the atmosphere. Because at that point, if you go down enough, it becomes up. Mm. Ah, that it's still up. Oh, why are you worried about it still being up? Well, I mean, I would have it if the sky's Look, I am a firm believer the sky is not actually up. I see. Your sky is down, sort of person. Regardless of whatever you do, you've got to go up in order to reach the sky. Even if you go down, you reach a point where you've still got to go up to reach the sky. But what if I'm already in orbit? You still have to go up to reach orbit. Well, if you're in the orbit, if you're in orbit, you are in the sky. So therefore, it's all around you. And depending on where you are in it, it might still be up. I'm very tired. You're not the only one. <laughs> I mean, I'm just recharging my batteries, as it were. NASA, in order for the first, in order for the first manned mission to to successfully make it to Mars, we've determined the best option is for an all-female crew to prevent pregnancy. Elon Musk, space baby. <laughs> <laughs> no, I figured out Elon Musk's secret. He wants to build the starship so he can go back home to Mars. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Yep. Back to Mars. The Army of Fiora Amber. has a new officer. Welcome, son. That's where he wants to go. Back to Mars. Ugh. Basically, he's, he's done living with us humans. <laughs> um, the the mistreated dreadnought is gonna have the rest of his paint stripped off tonight. Ooh. After stream, I'm gonna sit down and finish stripping him, taking a picture. Nothing like simple green. Uh, simple green didn't work. Ooh. I had to get um, uh, engine degreaser. Oh wow. Yeah, this poor thing was, like I said, it, it, yeah, if it was beyond simple green. Hmm. They used spray paint and just spray painted over his previous paint jobs. Oi. So there's a red and black outer layer. And under that, there's a white primer. And under that, there was a gold primer. And under that, there was white paint. And under that, there was a black primer. And under that was a plastic. Oh, is the plastic ready? Yeah. Oh. Hmm. 
I mean, he's still got work ahead of him. I might All not have him ready to color. paint tomorrow. We'll see. I mean, that's that's a lot of layers to have to work through. I'd use a knife. Hmm. And was it cutting? It was scraping. Mm -hmm. Just dragging the flat of the knife blade along the side till it caught, and then peeling the paint off. Hmm. Enough paint came off of him that I'm like, this is several miniatures worth of paint. Who the fuck did this, this poor boy? Wonder how many armies he's been in. <laughs> oh, I just remembered something might come, might work the paint off easier next time. Citrus oil. It would usually be a no no. Mm. I actually have a Thanks, Arizona. Mm -hmm. Today wasn't weird enough. It's raining. Rainy in Arizona. And the sun's out. What? Oh, God, it's the apocalypse. So, I found out that somebody's been buying up the old uh, Microprose IPs and is making a legitimate sequel to the original Carrier Command. Oh, boy. Oh, Jingles was showing something called Carrier Command 2 on his uh, channel. Yeah, yeah that's... Yeah, was showing that... that off in VR with, like, 20 <laughs> The question is, is it any good? At the moment, it's a demo of an incomplete game, so we'll have to see. Uh, it's not due to release until middle of next year. Is it still a demo? Mm. But the fact that somebody's actually resurrected Microprose is interesting. Okay. Let me check the one issue I have with the cast that they showed us. If they intend on making this into a show, are they actually going to hire on the Samurai Jack's voice actor permanently? Or are they going to kill I his mean, character during the movie so they don't have to do that? The problem is he's not the only high-profile uh, personality in that lineup. I mean, geez, Philip Lamar has been around forever. 
No, we didn't really he's have... not just he's not just Samurai Jack. He's also Hermes. Like I say, he's been around forever. There's somebody in there that I can't remember his name now, but he's been in he's been around in Hollywood since the seventies. I think this so is there's... a problem, honestly, because one, I don't think they can afford that cast for a regular show, which means those are either side characters we're not going to see again, or they're going to die. And two, um, the entirety of the show, save for one character, if you were a major, like, high-end voice actor, you were a side character. The five of the main six were not, like, super high-profile actors on purpose because they needed to be able to afford them. So the question becomes... Are they actually able? To, are they actually going to pay for this cast to do a regular, sh uh, weekly show after the movie, or is this a one-off, and then we're going to have new voice actors for the regular show? Well, I mean, I mean, of the main six, the one who was most close to like being like a high-end profile was Tara Strong. Yeah, she was the Tara Strong. At the time they were hired, was the only voice actor who was like really expensive. Now, Tabitha St. Yeah. Germain is also really expensive. But and, but the side characters, like, the reason why we don't see much of Princess Celestia or Luna or Cadence is because their voice actors are not cheap. And that was done on purpose to kind of just to kind of discourage the the staff from overusing those characters and instead focus on, you know, the main six characters. Not to mention Discord. Yeah, Discord was also again a side character because he yeah. was either <laughs> in the episode or not. Um, but the vast majority of the actors that showed up episode to episode were not that expensive, and the one-off characters were usually not that expensive, with the exception of Tempest in the movie. But it's one the movie and B Tempest. Yeah, I mean, it's like a one-time. Yeah, you get to or, actually um, see that character. What's her name that did the the Kieran? He's actually a really high end actor. Mm. Like so high end that when they, that when they found out they got her as the voice actor, they threw out eighty percent of the episode they'd already written and redid it. Mm. Also, Punish it, yes, money talks in Hollywood, but you've got to have the money to begin with. And you've got to remember, first and foremost, MLP is there to sell toys. Always that's, has been. That's how the execs still treat it. And if they treated it as a, a TV show first and toys second, then we would have, you know, significantly longer lasting. And we would have had longer yeah. lasting generation one, two, and three, and we would have significantly higher quality shows. But now that they've seen that it right. can be a show, the question is, are they jumping off the wagon and going straight in and going... Yes, this can be a TV show. We just have to make sure it's a TV show. Or are they going, no, it's still here to sell toys. Yeah. I mean, it does take money, though, because when I approached an agency in Atlanta to do voice work, the layout of money, 1000 for a SAG card, 300 for a headshot, no, demo tape, and then another hundred to get headshots made. So I'm already was looking at fourteen hundred dollar investment. Yeah. So it ain't cheap, people. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, but it's just like Transformers hasn't had a cartoon show, but they keep making movies because the movies make money. Um, that's not correct. Uh, there's apparently a Transformers CG show on Netflix. Currently, new one. Currently, a new one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but that's. Let's see. I'm looking. I'm gonna look here. Well. All right. So currently, the new one is the first animated uh, series. It is not simply a guest appearance or movie since 
Oh boy. 2000. Yeah. 21 years. They had Armada, Energon, and Cybertron, but those were all straight to straight to DVD TV shows. That nobody hosted. They had Transformers Animated, which is just called Transformers, and a little animated underneath it. That aired from 2007 to 2009, and then they had Cyber Missions, 13 episodes from January 2010 to September 2010. And then everything else is not hosted on a regu- on an actual, as an actual TV show, and the rest of the Transformers stuff is all the movies, which is kind of silly. Yeah. Also, that's probably how Michael Bay pays for his 20th mansion, let's be honest. Anyway, I'm going to go make tea, because it's usually a pretty good moon summoning ritual, am I wrong? No, it usually works. I just managed to hit the first thing I've eaten. 700 pounds of books later. Blue them inside. It's raining now. Mm. Oh, I'm looking at some of those names they've got that are going to be doing the voices in uh, He-Man on Netflix. Yeah, they got some fairly fatty names there as far as paycheck earners go. I think one of them is also doing Gen 5. Uh, It depends on who's doing Gen 5. Uh, but I'm looking at the IMDb list of who's who in here, and it's like the 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 Onion Knight from Game of Thrones is playing Man at Arms, Liam Cunningham. Onion Knight from Game of Thrones. He was the pirate knight, the smuggler. See, when you say Onion Knight, I immediately think of Final Fantasy because I think that was two or three. <laughs> But they got Mark Hamill as Skeletor, and he don't come cheap, baby. No, but he does do a good uh, Skeletor. Yes. Oh, and Mark the, Hamill uh, will do anything he thinks will be fun. Oh, yeah. You know yeah. he's going to enjoy being the bad guy. He enjoys bad guys. He, he's learned how to be a bad guy. He, he just oh. enjoys doing us. Um, yeah, it's Lamar that's in uh, He-Man as well as... Um, Hero. Mm-hmm. Isn't his keys cast at his hero? Ah, uh, Justin Long yeah. is Roboto. Jason Muse, really? Jason Muse is in this, and his name is Stinkor. <laughs> oh God! But they've got he- Lena Headey as Evil Lynn, and uh, former Buffy star Sarah Michelle Gila. Wow, they've done. They've- Took her out somewhere. Jesus Christ! They found they found her. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I absolutely loved Puffy, but yeah, wow. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. I mean, they got a bunch. Alicia Silverstone is Queen Marlena, so she's gonna be playing Prince Adam's mum. There's an actress whose actual name is Harley Quinn Smith. She's playing mm-hmm. Eileen, and she's playing Eilina. Tony Todd is going to play Scareglow. Oh. oh, man. And Cree Summer as Priestess. Oh, they got a lot. They got a lot going on here. They got a lot of big names. This is not going to be a cheap production. <laughs> nope. I'm not from. Let me see what Chris Wood has done. 
He looks kind of familiar. Definitely does not look like He-Man, though. <laughs> oh, he's been on Supergirl, The Vampire Diaries, uh, Containment. Wow. Flash. Mm-hmm. He's been around. He's been around the CW. Mm-mm. Yeah, but this this uh this new series is going to be quite it's got to be costing the Netflix quite a bit of money to run, help run this. Yeah, Mark Hamill is not cheap. <laughs> no. No. Whereas I was told I was told a long time ago by another voice actor who told me like you got to stick up for other voice actors. Don't go lower than thirty thousand a year for your for your paycheck, because the big problem is some of the bigger voice names. They're like that. That's an easy half a million shot for them. Mark Hamill, half a million a pop. He ain't cheap. <laughs> so like I said, and the moon is shown. Hey man. Hey man. I'm just wondering why the hell someone posted like one third of the contents of a gallon of Agent Orange in general. Oh, I was showing free potential uh, paint removers for miniatures. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, basically, Citrus Strip is designed to help get rid of old, old paint you want to get rid of. I think it looks like it worked. Fucking varnish remover. Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> well, Fee had a minute as a dreadnought that has like 10 layers of shit on it. Yeah, somebody literally took what I assume because of the texturing and uh, the fact that it has metal flakes coming off of it that look like a dull gray metal uh, lead car paint and just spray painted over what was already on it. That's a thing I would do. So I, like... have, I have lovingly stripped his ass. Um, and now I just need to brush off the remnants of what's left, and then I can prime them and paint them. I'm glad that your painted assessment of uh, are you what what are you are you just painting assorted figurines? Are you doing anything aside from building a Death Watch team, or do you just? We're gonna gathering we're gonna a go small plastic Caltrop army. Once I, once I um, welcome, son. Get them painted and get my new laptop here sometime later this month. We're gonna go to the game store and uh, and actually play. There's like a Ooh, weekly thing. battle. But in the meantime, pay mode here. The army of Fiora has a new. Read what that is. Welcome, son. Yeah. <laughs> That's what had to be used to clean it. That was what you bought to get it? Oh, my God. Yeah, and that's one of the two products I did tell you of. The army I tried the green stuff. Or I tried, I tried the simple son. green first, and it was like, yeah, no, I'm not strong enough. Mm. Yeah, that's what I, uh, I got to double check, but I'm pretty sure that's the shit that I've used to remove rust from steel. <laughs> that is industrial strength. Uh, engine degreaser. It is used to degrease car engines for mechanics. <laughs> wow. I, it might have been... The... Has a new officer. Well, I don't remember. All I remember is I had to, like, scrape this... It was like if someone took grape Kool-Aid and Elmer's glue and, like, the unholy love child was this goop that I had to... <laughs> Uh, ring around some metal threading. It, it looked horrible. It smelled horrible. It was like the shit from the 96 Power Rangers movie. It was like the exact consistency of that. Oh, no. Oh, that no. would have been uh, like growing gel. Uh, but, okay, I'm, 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 I'm... There was I'm, a genuine oh, concern that some kids that play in the back alley would see, uh, would see that stuff in the open-air garage out back and think that it was Kool-Aid. 
So it says, I, I'm reading the label, Auto Home Industry, Farm and Marine. Holy shit. <laughs> if it ain't clean, it's clean now. <laughs> I was gonna say if it's willing to touch marine shit, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. She was. She was not playing around with that old dead paint on that dreadnought. Mm -mm -mm. The, the 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 time for discussion has ended. <laughs> she broke out the nuclear assault. Nuclear assault. I broke out the forbidden Kool-Aid. Yeah, that purple stuff. I broke out the forbidden purple stuff. The purple stuff that you're not normally supposed to use. I mean, if it burns, it's working. <laughs> Moon, you have to wear... Um... You have to wear a mask and gloves when handling that stuff. Well, yeah, because it has it. The fumes are caustic. The mm -hmm. fumes... You'll degrease your fucking lungs. <laughs> the fumes melted the rubber on the Tupperware containers, so they started seeping out, and I didn't uh... realize it because it was in the other room. The so sender came in here and said, "You need to take that outside." I went, "Why?" Because it's starting to toxify the house. So I yes. had to put it outside. <laughs> That is an outside thing. Because it had eaten through the rubber sealant around the edges of the uh, around the edges of the uh, the uh, the Tupperware container it was in. Good to know that that shit doubles as an all-purpose wildlife repellent. Just <laughs> just make a fucking magic circle like it's some like you're uh, a fucking extra in supernatural and just okay. And now mm. no wildlife will get here. Just think. Put that around the base of the house and no scorpions will come in. No shit. We haven't seen an insect in our yard for a week. Yeah, yeah. This shit is the best insecticide ever because living organisms are like, what is this? It's like um, a brake drum grease. If you get a like heavy gouge or something, if you put that over top of it, like it's not... It both is and isn't sanitary because bacteria <laughs> growth can't really grow in there. So on to shenanigans. Um, uh, I love you, Moon. Sketchy tier two. You're like one of three people who bought who buy the tier two sub. Everybody else is tier one or tier three. Mm -hmm. There is no substitute. Um, thank you for the resub. Uh, Fifteen months. You're like three away, and you will get your um. You get your 18 month emoji. That was not supposed to happen. I'm sorry. I have been hauling books all morning. Um, Chaotic Sorcerer. Uh, Zavin. Thank you for buying gift subs for Invisibrony, Two Pace, Sam Zaxel, Jules Lamar, Lunar, and Withered Key. I hope you all enjoy your free emojis. Um, and if you do like them, please do uh, re up the sub. Uh, because every one of those is actually, I, I'm going to be honest, Twitch in like two months has paid me more than YouTube paid me in a year. Yay. So, you know, those Damn. subs actually do work. They count. They make me feel like, you know, I'm not grinding by when I don't have any tips and instead it's all bits and subs because then on like the 15th of the month, I'm like, ah, oh, yay. <laughs> um, and Hetty, thank you for the Corgi uni Gay Unicorn Pride Franker Z Shamrock Bit Hoard. I'm sorry, what? He sent me he sent me a cor two corgis, two gay unicorns, two pride flags, two beagles, and two shamrocks. Mm-hmm. Yay! As bits. That's to buy everything. Enjoy your happy moment. I'm letting Moon enjoy his happy moment. All right. Danger. I mean, it's more, the it's more the fact that the shamrock is wiggling ever so slightly, and it's just... Mm -hmm. I'm transfixed. Uh, okay. While he's transfixed, uh, Danger Noodle, you're up. 
Really? That was fast. Did you want me to drastically come up with a insulting way to bring you in, or are you good with that? Warning! Warning! Oh, Stream tip overload! All hands, prepare for exploded broken oh, fjord God, in five, hat, folks. four, three, two, Were you one. waiting for Detonation your own introduction? Imminent. Were you actually just physically Boom. sitting Here there on the button, <laughs> waiting till I said your name, and then when Suda said your name, you're going to be like, she said my name! Here you go! And I'm wow. Like, wow! Wow, there's no... There's no slipping anything past you. Twitty just came up with his wallet, slapped me with it, and said, Say my name, bitch. That's right. My wallet. It's the biggest thing in my pants. <laughs> I need an adult. Dude. I need an adult. You just fucking somersaulted onto that landmine. <laughs> Tough the landing, though. <laughs> oh, God. So anyway, I know folks it's been a little while because we've had a few in interesting interventions and other fun things from real life. But last time we left off, they were getting their ways into the st into the stable or trying to just trying to figure out how to get through the inner door because the inner door is the tough one. Uh, they were discussing the situation of uh, the battle that happened uh, between Mythic and uh, Valor. Yep. And uh, several of the other ponies were doing their pony things that they usually do because, you know, uh, Chifundo likes to do shaman things. And uh, apparently. One, one could say they were horsing around. Uh, oh, boss. Uh... <laughs> Oh fuck all of you! That one was good. And and and, wow. and the new and the newer ponies, well, especially the mystery pony, he was doing his weird things with his journal. And pineapple was uh, well being pineapple. And uh, medicinal haze was doing his usual thing. But the big stickler thing is that uh, Nyota kind of sort of said a few things and then walked off because of the little bit of an argument between Sunrise and the Mythic, because, well, she's gotten a little strange, and during all that, she did at least get herself back, sort of, kind of semi-back together, because apparently the Sunrise we all know and the 19 are kind of supposed to be part of the same pony. How they got separated and split? That's a weird one. But, uh, well, the gang is back, and it's time for more shenanigans. And with that, I'm going to leave it to uh, the intro. As fires burn out from yesterday, a wandering mare's found a better way. For just as night seems most dark, the sunrise comes to warm our hearts.
this is my chance to actually just kind of sit a minute and talk to you guys before we start. Uh, this weekend we have the Death Watch game, which again you guys are allowed to interfere with either for the good or ill of the players present. It is to raise the last bits of funding for the printing of the third novel from this very tabletop game series. Um, that novel goes out at Everfree. I am closing pre-orders. That means you will not be able to pre-order the book. You will have to pay full price. You won't get a free bookmark. And you won't get your book until after Everfree because I'm not sending out any non-pre-order until after I get home from Everfree. That all happens on July the 7th. So exactly one week is all you have left to pre-order. When we come back next week and do the stream next week, that's the last day. When that stream ends, I'm flipping it over. So if you haven't pre-ordered that book yet and you want to, this is your last chance. Um, yeah, those are the two things you guys need to know. Now I'm going to hand it over to the Moon Hoof. All right, Moonfuck, it's all yours. Yep, just just sat back down. Had to run back from upstairs. Is he okay? Should I yes. ramble more? I'm here. Breathing. Oh, wait, hold on. This will help. The confusion. Sorry. I, uh, oh god, my, my mic, ah. my mic. Are you sorry, okay? my microphone was not picking up my voice, and I had just ran downstairs for a moment. I was talking, but it still wasn't picking it up because it was trying to pick up my voice through two ceramic cups. I mean, I heard you just fine. We heard you fine, unless there were whole periods where you weren't speaking, but what you're doing now, I think you're on a telephone. What? Sounds normal to me. Mm, it, it, it is a little on the muffled. Okay. Is this any better? That's wonderful. Yes. That's okay. perfect. It, it's it's because I was holding the microphone just a moment ago while I was reaffixing the base so it could stand. Ah, understand now. No, no. It, it, I mean, it's on top of the stand. This it's not under the stand anymore. Are you sure you've missed me? You haven't had to deal with this in two weeks. It must have been nice. You didn't have to deal with me. Goes to the store. Buys desk. Chair. Microphone stand. Studio quality microphone. And better lighting for your room. Shows up to your house and changes all your stuff out while you're not there. Don't you talk shit about my uh, about my pink pur about my pink purple microphone. This thing works fine. It was also cheaper than the black one because it was pink. How does that work? I usually don't... usually they charge extra for pink things. It was multiple dollars less. And literally the only difference is that the the metal shell on this one is pink as opposed to the other one which had a black metal shell. That's it. That's the only difference. Okay. And it's not like Lisa Frank posters pink. It's like metal pink Power Ranger pink. 
or, or like world or like the I don't know why I'm rambling about the oh right yeah medication right so now that my brain's working at a rate that I could at least uh, attempt to pretend is working um, where's the are we sure no I, I mean at, like at most I'm just going to glib tongue for the next multiple few minutes while I make sure that everything is up and running because I can do that I probably shouldn't do that because no one really wants to pay attention to me doing that should we keep the same initiative do you all want to re-roll initiative I'm sorry, I should slow down. I can take it or leave it for a uh, newer shame initiative. Uh, yeah. I'm good. I'm great. I'm not on the turn order. Yeah, you oh, that's right. I've been moved off the map. Got it. That's right. Um, um, well, no, you're number 14. Me. Yeah, you just put on me. Hey, Moon, we'll be, uh, we'll be back to the page. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Thanks, whoa. You're welcome, buddy. I, I feel like we're all being talked down to, and it's an inside joke. And? Nah, actually, you're not. We're just being silly. Or are we? You'll never know, because I will never tell. <laughs> we, we have, I mean, we had two weeks off. Let, let us have some fun. <laughs> hey, knock it off. The military dropped the whole don't ask, don't tell thing. Boo! Ah, oh, boo. No, I'm, I'm just an inappropriate. Anyway, um... So let's see. Okay. I need to type some words. Oh, crud, I still need to pick a level 17 part. Okay, sorry about that. I had to type words, and I can't keep down the uh, push to talk key binding and type. Ah, well, you <laughs> know, you are technically allowed to uh, to be open mic, right? I, I know, but there is a large amount of background noise, and otherwise, I, like what I'm typing, the only thing you just hear would be me, you know like, domestically abusing my keyboard as I'm just kind of breathing. That's it. There's nothing interesting. Keeping it on push to talk at least doesn't make me sound like a fucking serial killer. I mean, there there's a noise suppression. Yeah, you can turn that on. And if well, I remember I mean, right, Moon, if I remember yeah. right, Moon's pickup on the voice is pretty terrible on Discord. We'll, uh, we'll play yeah. with We'll play with voice and or we'll play with voice activity for a little bit and see how terrible it is. 
See what it doesn't pick up. See what it does pick up. Uh, or you could just turn on the noise suppression function, which will take care of the, the typing sounds as well as any exterior sounds that aren't people speaking. Look, I, I, I can suggest that. Uh, okay, hang on. All right, we are going to... Assuming that's with noise suppression off. Okay, it is picking... Okay, it will pick up random noises above a certain decibel because it still thinks it's human speech. All right, good to know. Moving on, aside, uh, moving on and uh, just pretending, you, you, you know what, whatever, I don't care. Fuck it. Words. Red. Why did I get pinged? Why did I get pinged in here? Uh, what? Oh. Uh. Everything we'll changed when the soon. Microsoft. Everything changed when the Microsoft Nation attacked. I promise we'll start soon. What? Oh. Okay. <laughs> now that I've gotten everything squared back up, I didn't realize that Nyota was going first. That's the entire thing that threw me off. Um, now that I've got that, uh, let's shoot. Uh... Yeah. I need to throw this back on to Yeah, for for safety's sake, I just need to have this thing on push to talk. Anyway, um All right, yeah. So then with that all taken care of, Adagio, do you you have talking you have the talking stick. Okay, so I can't post that meme. Okay. Wait, which meme? <laughs> the shit, shit, shut the fuck up. You don't have the talking stick. No, fuck you. You have the talking stick. <laughs> so I do don't have the talking stick. So since I'm talking, you can post the meme there. I've been got a fool. Bonk. Anyway, <laughs> um, last I recall, uh, Nyota was uh, tending to cleaning up the forge and trying to get it functional again. Yep. Unless somebody wants to come over and bother him, I'm gonna stick around and do that. Wait, a forge? It's small. Yeah. It's um it's more of a, a personal maintenance type forge. Something that would allow you to reheat and bend back tools. Um, something that would allow you to melt down things or do minor repair work. It's not anything that you're going to uh, sit down and produce a set of masterpiece armor on, but it's something that you could use to unfuck a pauldron with. Okay, I got super confused because you shot me back about three years in about two seconds. What? My brain went back to stable fi. I was like, no. when, did you get, when did you get gem forges out here? No. No, it's a, it's it's a it's a small forge. Yeah, it's kind of like a little one for Valor to work on whenever he's needing to work on his swords and armor for upkeep. That's literally what Moon just said. Oh, sorry. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the corner now. I I mean, there's also a, a plethora of just random things that it looks like he 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 heat treated and then just tried to shape into things. But um. Okay. Uh, I thought someone. I thought you were. Or I just. I, uh, tank horse, speak. I'm dead last. What are you talking? About? No, no, not you. Big Z, speak. Oh. Um, I hand over the talking stick to Mythic. God damn it! Why have you given me this power? All right, so Fee, are we we are restarting this conversation from the beginning, their talk, or are we gonna just kind of? 
I would assume you wanted to restart the conversation from the beginning. That would be good. I just, I do not feel good about that conversation. Okay. Thanks. So we're hitting the quick load, people. Yep. Loading. Load. There was what? a save point at the end of the fight. We had to go through all that again. <laughs> so oh, okay. Ah, okay. So there's a universe where Mythic had to use the auto injector, and a, and a universe where Mythic didn't have to use the auto injector. This is the divergence point. This is the hard divergence point. <laughs> Oh, darn it. And now I'm thinking about Wolfenstein 2. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is where the Steins Gate music starts playing. Oh, but I just wound you. Oh, that, that, that's a whoosh for me. Right over the head. <laughs> Listen, someone else said Steins Gates. Why aren't you two? Damn it, I know what Steins Gate is. Anyway, so go ahead, Mythic. I'm gonna... You have the talkie stick. All right, let me get my brain on track here. It's mythic and Sunrise kind of walked off, separated from the party, had just gotten through with saying that they needed to talk out their differences here. Uh, where till I begin? All right, Sunrise, so. You don't trust me. Correct. At least at the moment, I don't. Well, perhaps we start on that. Why don't you trust me? Because I've asked your story twice and got vague answers. And no offense, well, but the event for which we met you is not exactly one in which you meet the most trustworthy of individuals. That is fair, and perhaps really why I haven't revealed too much about myself. I also don't really like talking about myself to strangers. You have been traveling with me for, she looks at her pit buck, one month, three days, and six hours, according to the Pip Bucks tag. It's already been a month. What day is today? June 28th. 184 years post Mega Spell Bombs. He has a moment of silence as it looks like something has really set into his mind before he kind of shakes his head and kind of goes back to that little neutral face. Huh, I am 24 now. God, time has still flown by. Anyway, so you want to know more about me. I'm not sure with how much I trust you with my story, but... You have literally put your life into my hooves on three separate occasions. Put your life into Medicinal's hoof at least once to go into South Shore to have yourself cured. And again, today you put your life into his hooves. And he travels with us. And honestly, he's been more than willing to talk about where he comes from and what he does and why he does it. So this is my confusion. Well, I can argue with you right there. I haven't exactly put my life into anybody's hooves at this point. I have been traveling with you, and I have been traveling with you. But um, honestly, if things were to turn sour, I could have easily handled myself. And up to this point, I've been ready for shit to hit the fan. But as far as where I, as far as my story is concerned, there isn't terribly much else to tell you other than I've been wandering the wasteland in search of this sword that comes from my town. This sword is a very old, very allegedly 
powerful blade of sorts owned by some old war old war hero or something of that sort. I never really paid attention to a lot of those old stories. You guarded this object and never understood why? To be quite frank, I've never really cared. So why are you after it? Well, it was kind of my job. I felt kind of responsible for it getting taken from my village. Although, at this point, I'm not really sure why I bothered going after it. To be honest, things have been bugging me, especially since I talked with your, one of your friends, uh, Nina, way back, when, way back when we first met. She said something that kind of stuck in my head up till now. Something about how the reason me... The reason I left was to go after this sword sure sounded much better than just me leaving because I wanted to leave. It... I don't know. I guess you, really... You can what? have any reason you want for leaving, but you need a reason to where you're going. I have mine. There's a knife over the back of our heads ready to drop if we don't go intercept it. I feel like that's an explanation and a half that's going to take the better part of the week. Uh, we'll get to that. Um, as, far as, as far as my reasons for leaving is probably a little bit more selfish than I'd like to admit. Look, I've got keys and, and information to piece together. It's not like I'm in any hurry. Because from what I can tell, I've got the key. I just need to know where the keyhole is. And, uh... The people who want to shove a knife down the back of my head can't get another key. But they're highly motivated to see me keep working, and I intend on taking as much time as possible till I can figure out a plan. So, in the meantime, if you want to sit here and give me a long story, I'm sure I can convince Pink to manifest some popcorn. But no, at the moment, I'm not sure I trust you. And honestly, it might not be you. It's just the way you do things that irritates me. And I suppose that's why I don't trust you myself. Then why are you traveling with me? That is an interesting question that, is current, that has gone through at least two or three evolutions as, since I've joined you. Motions yep. a hoof, like, and? Well, when I first joined your group, I'm going to be honest, it was kind of the same reason I left my hometown in search of some big heroic adventure for me to go on. I saw you guys going off somewhere and having some big adventure, and personally, I'm really tired of just adventuring by myself, you know? I've had I've adventured with others before, done things, and I much prefer others. And so, seeing you guys going off on this grand adventure to save whatever, not really sure what exactly it is that you're doing. I know a little better now, but it still seems... He kind of waves his holes vaguely and nebulously in the air. Like, don't get me wrong, I get that there's these keys and these keyholes and these boxes. It's all kind of a lot to digest at this point, and I'm still not really sure where the problem is. But back of the point, kind of, I kind of just really joined you guys on my own desires to, I don't know, do something heroic for once. I've always looked up to those old old legends and such. Legendary heroes or adventurers that go off and slay some evil beast or do something great and everyone really likes them. Something that I've always wanted. Do you understand why you're told never meet your heroes? 
Oh no, I perfectly understand. Because they are not going to be what everyone says they are. I am as flawed and strangely as opinionated and outright stubborn as the next Earth Pony on the list. And I'm not going to even attempt to deny that I have done some pretty stupid things. Because I have. But does that but does that change the legends about you? What other people think of you? Nobody's going to hear about all that stuff. Everyone's going to hear about how great you are and all of these great big grand things that you do. It's because and you know, you don't have to be the at the asshole in real life. You could just kind of be a really nice pony. Did you just call me an asshole? No, I said you didn't have to be an asshole. <laughs> you know, in response to, to you know, don't meet your heroes. It's not about so, really being an asshole. It's about, you know, I have no way to live up to those expectations. Occasionally, yes, we do something great. Now, we before you go any impossible. further, now, before you go any further, I, w I want to make sure it's clear. I don't mean you. No offense. I'm sure you've done some great things, and I've heard recently that you've done some great th things, but up to this point, you're not really anybody to me. I've never really heard of you up till this point. So when I say all of this stuff, just know that I really, up to this point, you were just a random mayor. And what about Nyota and... Chifundo and Medicinal and Scapola. Absolutely random ponies that are traveling with you. In fact, I'm not even, I wasn't even sure if you were the leader or not. You just kind of were there, just like the rest of them. You were all traveling together. And I really just kind of wanted to join in on that. Something, something about it just kind of drew me in. Um, and definitely a big part of that was there was a promise of some really big grand adventure and I really kind of wanted to be a part of that. I am of course. only as much the leader as is necessary to function when we are forced to battle. Well, you seem quite keen on taking the leadership position in more than just battles. Yes, but at the same time, I have Nyota. Fundo, medicinal starting to get that way. Who offer alternatives, ideas, corrections, changes, or different methods to what we are doing? And I have to take them seriously, and I have to consider it. And some, a lot of the time, we try it out. I am only the leader in the sense that uh, I'm a compass more than I am in charge. I point the direction we should probably go. I, you know, try to keep us from actually hurting anyone, which is vastly different than most ponies in the wasteland. And I keep a policy of you get forgiven an infinite number of times so long as you actually make an effort and when you don't then we have to make sure that you're not going to hurt someone else but even the goddess with a gun after I dropped a nuclear warhead on her at the end of the day still got to find you know atonement So, that's pretty much all the leading I actually do. And that's the expectation of the rest of us. That's not quite what I've seen. She just motions you to go on. Part of the reason I don't trust you is... The way I've seen you treat your friends sometimes. I've seen you on one hand, you clearly 
your heart is clearly in the right place. You do things that make me smile. Things, nice things, random things. Things that show that you care for other ponies. And then you openly insult them in front of strangers. You take you take the lead without without hardly asking anyone else their opinions. You tend to try and override others. You're making vague notions. Examples? The way you the way you insulted Martini's love life in front of a bunch of strangers. That I didn't say anything about at the time because I simply did not know your party. That wasn't my place, but Martini is it always not, struck us. Martini is not our friend anymore. Some of your allies would beg to differ. Yes, yes, he is on a sour note with a lot of you, and I myself can hardly defend his actions, but at the same time, Who it seems a lot of you still differ? care about him. It would seem Jafundo still cares about him a little bit, and it would seem that you still care about him quite a bit, considering that none of y'all tried to keep to immediately kill him. And like that random mercenary, for some reason, another point, another point I wish to bring up, you allowed that one random mercenary, the one that tried to kill y'all, to be killed brutally by a griffin, and yet you spared the others without really I checking I did not him. make that decision at all. We as a group decided that the rest of the caravan should decide their fate, not us. And we allowed them to make their own decision. So no, I didn't decide to let that griffin just kill them. I let the rest of the caravan decide which of the survivors got to be set free and which ones were not worthy of such a mercy. We took it out of our hooves because we felt like if we kept it into our hooves and made the decision for them, that we would have a riot. I don't understand why you think I made that decision completely unilaterally on my own. That wasn't even my decision to make. They were after you lot. They also... I'm going to leave that. I'll let that one drop, though. You do have a point there. We were more than happy to simply disarm and let them go. Well, except for your husband, who insisted on trying to keep that ring on it on it on their horn and broke the key for it. Nyota is. A bit more pragmatic than I am. And if he had his way, I imagine there would be a few more dead in the world, but he also knows when to temper himself and not step over that line. If you noticed, I made Nyota some wonderfully destructive horseshoes that could in theory put dents into an actual tank and he um, refuses to as, use and he refuses to use them for the most part as a note nyota hasn't worn those at all since mythic has joined yeah i know but has it been is, that long but that doesn't yeah. mean they're not clattering around in your bag but he hadn't been using them since uh, the Battle of the Raptor. Fuck. He, yeah. he insists He's on most of the time going for non-lethal attacks. I can only think of one creature in this world in which he would put those weaponized hooves back on for, and she's not present right now. But... This is not about the actions of my friends or their attitudes. You have made what I consider accusations, and I would like to hear them out. 
but vague notions are not something that I would make against another, nor should you. You should have examples. Indeed. Perhaps another example is the way you... Okay, let me give, give me a minute. Let me re, let me remember the way the way you spoke, the things that you said to that town back there. The name of the town that we keep calling Beige Town. It wasn't Beige Town. No, was it Hometown? Hey, hometown. We call it Junction oh, Town. I thought we called it Junction wait, Town. Wait, which town? Hometown no, was the one where they picked the up the medicinal. The situation being the one where all the Slav ponies were, and we thought we and she sent the Slav ponies oh, back. To that wherever. was Hometown. The, the the little settlement where the Slavs were living, they didn't have a plate. They didn't have a name for it. It was just their hideout. Slavs hideout. There we go. There we go. Places have to have names. What the place I was at had a name. So back at back at hometown. The way you. I can't even begin to describe what, why would why would you tell them that they would go back home to their mothers and fathers, knowing full well that's not where they were going back to. I didn't tell them they were going back home to their mothers and fathers. I said they were going back home to the mother to some to someone who's from the motherland. Do you not? Uh, that I was assume... said. If I may interject, no, we. Did purposely make it sound like they were coming back. Um, oh. If I remember right, I kind of grumbled about that at the time. Because we wish to avoid a fight. And by doing that, you have set an entire town against us needlessly. Well, if we told them where they were going, they would have sent someone to try to stop them. At least this way they get 48 hours head start. I I can't say either way, but I don't believe they would send someone after them to stop them, considering... They literally sent us to try to kill them. Exactly, and if they're gone somewhere, then problem solved. Not that I could say for sure either way, considering that I guess it's just and kind it of was, a moot point now. And it was not their point desire. Being, it was spelled out to us before we left that it was not in their best desire to have them go anywhere else. Either they come back home or we get rid of them. And from the we get rid of them part, it sounded like they wanted them either to give up and go, come back home or us to simply kill them. I'm Pretty sure that if we it, had, you know, they were being. It was the uh, the tone of their voice was very much like get rid of them. So yeah, if we had that, now hang on, I'll stop you right there because that is quite the assumption. Consider... But the point re the point remains: you lied to them. And whether or not we could have solved that without them hating us eventually or lying to them is a moot point now. But the point is, you did that on your own without consulting with anyone else in the party. Yes. And the fact that you did lie to them. Mythic, I have learned the hard way. That sometimes the best negotiation tactic is to not tell the truth. As much as I would rather just tell the truth. Because sometimes to get two people to sit down into a room and actually have a conversation that will have a positive outcome, you have to initially lie to them about the reason for being there. And that sucks. But... Sometimes that's the only way you can get two people who don't like each other to sit into a room and actually talk it out. Rather than trying to that, kill each other. That is perhaps not the best thing that I've ever heard. Honestly, honesty is usually the best policy. If you lie to two people about why they're there, then sit them in a room 
you've not only you've not only proven yourself to be a liar, but you have tricked both of them. You run the risk of causing more friction, not only between them, but them and yourself. And if there's no other method to get them into a room and sit down and talk instead of shooting each other? Well, perhaps they should just, they should have gone their, their separate ways to begin with. Well, they're not going their separate ways because they're shooting at each other. Well, in that regard, you simply stop them from shoot, stop them shooting each other and have them go their separate ways. Unless, of course, you know, context demands that one of them is in the wrong and the other one is in the right. There are several, there are several ways to deal with this situation. Point being, lying and trick, lying and trickery is not the way to do that, and not a way to make yourself a trustworthy pony. If you believe that is the correct way. Oh no, I don't believe that's the correct way in the slightest. Usually try the truth first, and if the truth doesn't work, then you have to figure out some other method, but the point is to prevent violence at all costs. And that is unfortunately not how things work out here in the wasteland. You're right, that's how things worked in the old world. You're not talking to a pony from the wasteland. You're talking to a pony who's been in the wasteland all of about a year and a half. Not even that. Probably closer to a year and a month at best. Well, congratulations. We have similar experiences. And I can tell you that that's we not only really have best. similar experiences in the slightest here. And I have to well, clearly that when interacting with you. Well, clearly, considering that you detest me despite the fact that I am honestly just try just handling things as best I know how. Well, no, I detest you because you handle things unilaterally and because your first instinct is to fight. Not yes, my first it. my you... first instinct is to face the problem before me, however it may be faced. Sometimes it is with a sword. Sometimes it is with words. Sometimes it's... Mythic, name one instance in which you have faced a problem with words since I've met you. Or suggested using words and not a threat of violence or violence itself. A couple of times whenever I've gotten the chance. I haven't really gotten the chance to do much here. No, I wanted a specific example. And you're now, again initiating a vague some assertion that has no evidence to back it so far you have accused me of three things two of which i have proven were not my decision or action and every time that i ask you for a specific example from your own life you avoid it so i'm beginning to think that there is something behind you that you don't want us to see not just something behind you that you don't trust us with, but something behind you that you honestly hope never sees the light of day, because that's how you act a lot of the time. When asked for specifics, when asked for an example, a story, a memory, a uh, event in your life, you have this tendency of obfuscating heavily. Except that I've given you exactly as many examples as you've asked for so far. Uh, no. And two of the examples you've given were not my actions. And I told you that. And the third one, you know what? That's fair. I lied to them. I lied to them so we could leave and not tell them that we had sent their children somewhere else. Because their children didn't want to come home. So I sent them, so I sent their children somewhere they would be welcome. All right, so what about the mining and refinery facility? You were quite determined to bring the whole place down despite our wishes. I lived through an age in which I saw the rise 
and fall of technology as well as the rise and fall of its use in morality. I can tell you that no matter how good your intentions are with most forms of technology, someone eventually gets a hold of it and uses it for ill or their own personal benefit at the detriment of others. I can say to some degree, having only vaguely heard of them, I do agree with some of the things the Steel Rangers say. I don't agree with their way they act upon those things. But unless we were willing to stay in that mining complex and work it out and, and stay there and turn it into a functional base and, and have ponies there to keep the technology that was there maintained and used in a way that would not result in ravens flying across the wasteland harvesting anything made of metal i don't really think that's something you want to let out of the bag because once you let that genie out of the bottle it doesn't go back down very easily so what would you have done would you have stayed there and made that your home would you have taken the time to convince at least 20 creatures to come that you trusted to come live there because if the answer is no then would you have left the technology to be rediscovered by someone else in the wasteland who is a complete unknown? Sunrise, have you ever considered it wasn't a problem to begin with? Not truly. Not in that way. Not a problem that we had to deal with in any of those ways. It is an old mining and refinery with most of the machinery broken down beyond repair. And yes, I uh, yes, I suppose somebody, somebody after hundred and something years could come by and spend the time to rebuild up the facility and use it again, but to what ends? You're forgetting about the automated machine that replicated cybernetic mechanical ravens that would run around and eat steel, silver, or any form of metal to bring back to repeat the process. Now, hang on. I don't think we actually ever found the machine that built those. We just know that they were there and they were sent to return to that facility. And, that, we, and the facility also had a control tower that controlled them. I mean, we could simply have turned them off, but that just leaves the question, what if someone comes back and turns them on? Well, and we did solve that problem, didn't we, by having them all cannibalize each other. Yeah, but based on them returning there, either we did not find something that was there, because there had to be a reason why they were going there. Where were they putting all of the metal they were recovering? Were they... Poss possibly back into the stockpile, and it was a facility that... And those birds we were... found no metal in the stockpile. It had to be going somewhere, Mythic. Um, no, we knew exactly where it was. They were dropping it on the ceiling. Or there, there, hey, hey, saw on the cameras where they were dropping. But the point is, we have no idea why they were doing that, and there had to be something about that location that was drawing them back. Well, they were robots. They could have simply just been programmed pre-war. They might have been turned on recently. They might have been doing that for God, this is no as how many years. And would the you point, leave... point is, the point is, is it really that kind of a problem that we needed to deal with in that regard? I have completely lost the original point of this conversation. Blowing up the mine. Blowing up the mine, yes. Blowing up the minor refinery that we didn't really need to do, but your heart was dead set on that, despite all of our various arguments and reasons and examples that we gave you. And even right now, as you're accusing me of obfuscating, obfuscating, obfuscate. I gave obfuscate. you my reason, you're refusing to accept it. 
there's a difference between giving a vaguety and going, no, I don't want anyone to find those birds, their bodies, that equipment, or any of that, and restart that process. I've given you my reason. Do not. And, I'm, and I am giving you my reason. Sunrise, just because you have a... Is that what this all boils down to? The fact that I do not accept your reasoning and give you reasoning otherwise. As I have done up to this point. No, you haven't. You've accused me of two things I didn't do. I owned up to the third one. And now you're saying you're not giving me a good enough reason to leave that kind of technology just lying around. You're making another was, vague assertion without any any fact back. That wasn't the original point of the conversation, Sunrise. And I've also given you a good reason for that. We did destroy the technology as you wished. The facility, the point is, you are still quite dead set on ex exploiting that place. And now, you are arguing with me with the fact that I am vaguely accusing you of something that you didn't do without giving you an example. Sunrise, that's why I can't trust you. Mythic. That's why I find Mythic. things you say funny. I find your logic circular, flawed, and on top of all of that, I find that you were just trying to make up a reason rather than actually present me with one. If that is how you wish to treat me going forward, fine. You figure out your reason why you want to follow us. I'm not going to help you. Nor am I going to sit here and be badgered like this when you can't even give me solid reasoning. She gets up and goes inside. Okay. Arcane. Um, yes, hi, I, I am here. While all of that is going on, while Nyota is off uh, setting up a charcoal stove, um, what is the boy doing? Um, have we exited spirit mode, or, uh, Eddie, are you wanting to kind of do a small hop, skip, and jump over that conversation? No, we can, we can just leave that conversation as is if you want. Okay. Nice. Right. I mean, you can always retread. You can always retread it if you want to. I honestly can't remember most of the gist of that conversation. Okay, it, so, it was. Uh, I mean, mostly just a summary of it was. Uh, let me find it. It was actually a pretty short conversation. Oh, uh, basically, basically just. Oh, sorry, sorry, go ahead. Carry on. Oh, uh, basically, roughly, it was discussion of basically that. Uh, Hang on, I gotta think. All right, so let's say that it's uh, so just for for the sake of trying to get things to some kind of level of smoothness. Smoothness words. Wow. Uh, okay. Um, uh, I figured I figured it out. Basically, discussing Chifundo having the whole astral projection and how kind of a basic idea of how. Uh, where they are in astral projection is where the spirits reside. Oh, your door in the yo know, right thing. Yeah, then then you basically confirmed how uh, yeah the, the, the door works on the same plane of existence as astral projection. Yeah, the, the, they're basically both a form of space, but in between the space between spaces. Okay, yeah. so you leave your bubble. You are out of the bubble. You've been unbubbled. I mean, I. I'd probably leave at about the same time, but anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm say you can you can take your turn your turn as well, Chafundo. No, I'm happy for Arcane to do his thing. I just wanted to make that mention. I uh, you're, you're good. Uh, so is it just simply Arcane Chafundo and the boofer in the room? And pineapple. All right, and pineapple. I thought you were. I thought pa that you pa were, pineapple uh, at this point is almost merged into the fluff. Yes. 
He All is right. uh, glomped kind of tightly on top of Chifundo's head. Just, I wish to become one with the with the shine. Um, Arcane will chuckle and gently pat Pineapple on the head. Although, I, I, just on the I shoulder. Was the moth. Chifundo is the moth. <laughs> I was going to say, although with the... Uh, with the presence that Chifundo was outputting, having subse or having subsided, uh, Pineapple would slowly make his way off of Chifundo, uh, pulling his head out of the eternal source of fluff and just making his way back down. A little bit of a nervous chuckle as he just scoots over towards anyone who wasn't the pink zebra horse. You can tell, though, that it's clearly embarrassment and not dislike. Arcane would confusedly blink at uh, Pineapple's reaction to Chifundo. Raises a hoof. Should I... Should I ask about your reaction, or should I let leave my dogs lie? Uh, Looks at the boofer. Pun not intended. Pun not intended. Pineapple looks over to you, still uh, a, clearly a little bit embarrassed. No, just I feel bad because I was taught uh, when I was younger to respect personal space, and uh, I basically had my muzzle buried in his mane. I'm I'm sorry. It's just so warm. It is like a hug, but it was a hug for my soul. Walk, walk, walks up to him. Pat, pats him on the back and uh, explains that he, Chifondo doesn't mind and uh, steps away again. And would also pat him on the back gently. I, I'm guessing he ends up getting a group hug. There are small flails, but that is the most. It's probably a very gentle group hug. Well, like I said, I just patted him on the back and stepped away. So. Yeah. All right. So you're off with that. You're off with that. Um, Arcane, are you going to do anything else, or are you just mostly hanging out for, for I'm, I'm debating on asking Pineapple something or not. Go ahead. Arcane would pause and look back to uh, Pineapple and pull out a really old worn, beat-up journal, and flip it open. You mentioned something about the mare and the lake, right? Outside of... He pauses, kind of rotates his hoof in a circle as he thinks. South Shore, right? Uh, yeah. Well, considering that's close, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a couple of, well... Folk legends surrounding that particular event? He shakes his head. It's not really a folk legend. Um, it's um, the, the Dean talks about it occasionally, but it's one of those, uh, it's one of, it's taught as one of those cautionary tales. Um, her, was it her mother or her grandmother? One of her ancestors thought that she could hold part of the sun in her magic. And... Um, oh, yes. One of the founders of the town, Mayor Supercritical Mass. Uh, she thought that she could hold part of the sun in her magic and tried with everything that she could, you know, thinking that she could generate energy this way. And she was able to hold it in a shield for a very small amount of time. There was, it was so bright, according to the legends, that it looked like someone staring. It was a uh, staring directly into someone's fully charged light spell. And for a couple of days, she managed to hold it, realizing that if she set her shield down, she was going to die. And after a while of holding it up, there are some stories that speculate that it took 
uh, it took her a day. There are some that say a few hours. Some of the those who were bigger fans say that she held out for at least two days. But the fact of the matter remains that she held on for a while until the shield fell. And the energy that she had contained rebounded and backfired and detonated. And that's why we call it Crater Lake. Sorry, I'm typing all this up into my notes. Uh, upwards of two days. Uh, spell used, backfired, and created the lake. But yeah, why why is there a small freshwater lake there? The mayor at the center of it nuked herself. Um... Could I roll an academics or an arcane magic check to try to find a potential hook or a vague reason why the magic rebounded? Uh, you can roll academics and lore. Or you could roll academics, not lore. Specifically, not lore. This is no, no, academics. No, no. I, no, I no. a feeling it was academics. Yeah, yeah. I'm no, just making no, no. sure it's not something that's related to using it for for, for lore. No, uh, the, I, I think the perk applies to both. Actually, I think it applies more to academics more than anything else and as opposed to lore, but that's a talk for another time, probably. Actually, no. Put a pin in this and we can talk about this later. Okay, yeah, just roll dice. Okay, um, any penalties? Just, just roll dice. Roll. Okay, dice go click clack. Ah. Um, I need you to make me on uh, either magical energy weapons or explosives at a plus 15. Can I substitute? No. Uh, I, okay, crap. Hey, it was worth a try. It's because you passed that you're getting the secondary roll. Okay, let me check my muse. My okay, they're exactly the same. Let's see magical energy weapons. I have a fourteen in magical energy weapons and a fourteen in explosives. So, anything under a thirty? <laughs> Hell yes. So he rationalizes as listening to this tale, that, but only just um, that it whatever was going on functioned would function similar to um, <laughs> but I just keep reading that and laughing um, that it functioned similar because the the spell was. <laughs> Um, pineapple stops a minute as you uh, look with look with a sort of questioned understanding, but just oh, right, yeah, she was holding it in a shield spell. It ruptured the shield spell. And at that point in time, you realized that she was effectively holding a um, the collective energy of somewhere in the magnitude of several thousand pulse grenades, or of several thousand magical energy grenades. Arcane just blinks a few times and then looks towards the door, then back to Pineapple. Something akin to Mythic's shield variant of the shield spell. Yeah, that. Times a hundred. Well, judging from the fact that it's a crater, I'd reckon it closer to a thousand or maybe a million. Actually, yeah. no. He 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 waves his hoof at the mention of the one million. Ten thousand, we'll go, we'll call it there. We we managed to get stable fusion bottles in the town, but it it took 
many trial, many attempts of trial and error, but um, using what uh, Supercritical, where, picking up for her notes where she left off, um, yeah, they were able to finish the spell, but she showed them firsthand what happens if you don't spell right. Spell go boom. And he will nod before pausing. Fusion cell bottles? He, oh, um, yeah, that's, I don't really know much beyond that. I'm an, I worked as an innkeeper, not a technician. I'm sorry. Ar Arcane back the shoulder. Don't worry about it. I'm still curious about the story, if anything. Maybe we can I can find out a little bit more about these fusion bottles on my own time. After all, story is spread a little bit better than just simply information. She blinks. Well, it, it's I mean it's an it's it's a story containing information. It's a story based on true events. But sometimes, depending on how long the story remains, is sometimes with multiple tellers of the story, the story might change or mold into another form. Well, yeah, that's and, why no one can remember exactly how long she held the spell in the first place. And he gives a nod. But, exactly. But no, um, Anthracite was there. She's a very old unicorn. Anthracite? He asks it in like a questioning tone of, who's that? Oh, she's one of the, the mares of lineage. Um, she's the mother of, uh, the mother of Cinder, but the grandmother to Soot. Uh, mother of Cinder, the grandmare to Soot? <laughs> She is essentially telling you a whole, telling you a bunch of information that you, as a person, I'm assuming, are going. Hey, and, 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 uh, the character just, I have no idea who these people are. Oh, yeah, this no, is no, beautiful. No, no. no uh, Sandra went right over my head, but you said soot, and everything went green. <laughs> uh, and you said grandmare of soot, something like that. I never paid too much about the the, the whole hierarchy of things. I just kept my head down. But he will give a nod and finish writing his notes. You got any questions for me, or are you good? I... Why are you interrogating me about my home? I, I'm I'm trying to find Mythic. <laughs> I, <laughs> and he just looks out. I don't know where I am. The last thing I remember, I was nose deep in a zony fluff, and now you're here and questions where. Where is he? He pauses for a moment. All right, Cliff Nodes' version of this is basically we kind of went to a space between spaces. He pauses and raises a hoof, mentally retraces his tracks. Do you remember the room that we went into back at that inn? Yes. We basically did that, but it's Chifundo's brand of doing that. Well, that's why Chum. everything smelled like incense. Mm hmm And I think we're, we're still in the keep, and actually he pauses and starts looking around. I actually don't know where Mythic went. Maybe he's outside. Oh, he sets off to find him, because he's an adventurous small. Let uh, the small go on a fantastical adventure. Uh, medicinal. I pass my turn. After uh, basically just making sure Valor's as comfortable as possible in his bed, Hayes kind of just wanders off to find a spot to sit down quiet, lights 
a joint or lights a blunt and just chills. Um, Valor would kindly inform you that one of the the most serene places around here is at the top of the uh, is at the top of the turret um, between one of the pairs of crenellations. He mentions that he specifically made them uh, uh, pelvis wide so that he could sit down and look over the keep. Good to know. I don't think I can fly up there, but good to know. Ah, hold on. <laughs> Inside. There are stairs. Okay. Then, uh, I guess Hazel take the, the stairs up and, uh, yeah. Sits so out on, uh, yep. Huh. This is nice. Uh, hey, give me a perception check. Wrong system. <laughs> okay. Two versus six. Wow, that consistency, though. Yeah. Um, okay. Shit. Um, let me check the map. The map. Uh, you figure that with even a pair of binoculars, um, you'd be able to see for miles up here. But as is, you can see what appears to be um, a small, well, small from this distance, settlement off to the northwest-ish. Hmm. So there's a settlement off to the northwest? And it, that's definitely... No, we're two days away from Jungle Town. Right? No. Um, it, uh... Oh, it, half a day. I was gonna yeah. say... it. Yeah, I was gonna say, it, it matches up uh, very... Had you been in the discussions when they were attempting to find a... a, a fucking one of the... Uh, the One of the nearby, one of the other um, Philly Scout uh, training camps. No. Okay. Yes. Then you just see a fairly, uh, what is probably decently large, but you see a settlement off in the distance. Okay. Keep, keep in mind, I'm like intentionally, if, if Hayes is not like directly involved in the scene, I am not paying attention. <laughs> oh no, I I am aware that you are like intentionally making him absent minded. That's that's not. I'm just trying to make sure that like okay, wait. He if he had knowledge of this, he would definitely be able to, but okay, no, he he is missing that key piece of information. So, yeah, just some kind of city settlement off off to the uh, the northwest, but you know, there's a chair up here. <laughs> it even has a cushion. Nice. Yeah, he, he's just kind of this is nice. Yeah, and, and settles in. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, as Hayes talks in sunrise, you make your way back into the keep or out of the keep. Into the keep. Into the keep. Okay. I'm going to find Fundo. I'm All right, so at the map. 
All right. So as you are making your way into the keep, you would uh, catch the, the kind of the uh, the tail flick of Hayes making his way upstairs. Um, I don't know if Chifundo stayed inside, but there is a pine. Uh, no, I I uh, popped out the bubble as well. No, I mean in stayed inside the keep. Oh yeah, I'll be inside the keep probably. If, well, if, if that's where Arcane Pineapple is, then yeah. Um, so I assume I see a Chifundo, a Pineapple, and an MT, and a Chifundo is just coming out of his spirit land? Uh, no, he's he's been out of it for a little bit, but you see kind of a... Uh, <laughs> you see Arcane Grilling Pineapple. Frustration to happy to see Chifundo to worried about pineapple. Chifundo will shrug in a kind of, I think it's fine kind of way. <laughs> Just kind Could of, we, yeah, he's getting, watch, he's getting intense. Or... <laughs> Should we watch or can I take you aside to talk? I have an idea. Do you they all sort of nod and uh, walk up towards you? What is it you wish to speak about, Sunrise? Well, if I remember right, there was a time when you spoke of going to the, the tree hut near Ponyville, right? Owned by... Yes. Zakora at one point? point? Yes, that is correct. Well, I got to thinking. We're going to Manhattan anyway. After we leave here, that's the next stop. And it's a bit of a walk, but... Um... News media had it that Zakora died... trying to be a spy for the zebra and i'm pretty sure that might not entirely be the case but i think i can remember what building she died in and if you oh. can touch my dad the way that you're able to do you think maybe you can i i i'm, I'm trying to make up for not being able to get you to her hut and I thought about it and said, well, what if you just spoke to her? And my brain, she... and me and Pink have been putting together this idea of how to do that. Well, Pink uh, is rubbing your fucking hooves together because I'm over here about ready to rip my fucking beard out. <laughs> she may well have passed beyond the bridge beyond our ability to reach out to her, but yes. But at the place of death, I mean the legends you know, at the place of death the legends say you always leave something behind so there may be like a... Yes, there may, there may well be an echo. That's why I say it might be worth a try. Yeah. Um, worst case, we what, we get a we, we get an echo and we just get to like what is that exactly? Is that like when ghosts keep doing the same thing they did right before they died? Is that what there's, that is? There's many forms of echo. Um, sometimes it's just a vague sense of existence. Sometimes they will be stuck in a task. If if she didn't pass over at all, then she may well be entirely still here. Hmm. Well, I this... mean, we can one day go back and maybe find her hut. But in the meantime, the second best thing might be to see if there's something still there. And we're going to be there anyway. And I kind of went way out of the way for Martini. I think we should go a little out of the way for you two. Um, 
Okay, let's. I think it's worth a try at the very least. If you want to do it, if you don't, I, I understand. I just. Like, Nyota's found someone that, you know, he used to be a lover of here at the keep, and we went off to that base for Martini, and we went to that Spilly Scout camp to both get a break, and Scapola's now got a whole new life that, that she finally wanted, where she gets to, you know, be a Scoutmaster and, and, and bring that camp back up to speed. I just kind of felt like, you know... You should have something too. Well, let's. It's worth a try. I think I, I would like to. I think I have to steel myself that it may well be fruitless, but I think the effort is worth making. Yeah. Sorry for the rambling. I'm kind of also justifying myself that this is the right thing to do. Okay. She gives him a hug and then looks over his shoulder to see how the conversation between Pineapple and Arcane is going. Um. Well... It is an it is someone trying to grill an introvert for information so about as well as you'd think. It's an inch it's an introvert so, grilling an introvert. So it's really intense blue looking blue horse and deer in the headlights a uh, yellow horse. Yeah, and both of them are being asked what they want for dinner and other small, unimportant and meaningless choices. So, so is he like getting out the sweat lamp and all that? <laughs> what do you want to have for dinner on Thursday? <laughs> what are you talking about? The lamps in the office or streets to go with him? I mean, come on. If you're going to do an interrogation scene with a heat lamp, you can do it in monochrome. What? No, you do an interrogation with a pen light, so it's more hilarious. But yeah, as you sunrise, as you turn around, um, you would pick up something about fusion or crater lake and uh, assorted other uh, assorted other bits of sciency uh, historical information. Face but, palms, uh, leans over, uh, finishes hugging Chifundo. Face hooves, looks up at MT. MT, I don't think pineapples that kind of scientist. I uh, he, he explained that at that point already. That that that's kind of on me. That's kind of on me. That's fair. The only time I wear a lab coat is nightmare night. He walks up to Pineapple, and pats him on the back, which for her is a reach, by the way, still because he's probably taller than her. Uh. Yeah, but he's not. He's that. That figure actually needs to be shrunk down. That is way too tall. All right, there we go. Normal size, like about you know three and a half, four. Just middle of the crowd, very average horse. So yeah, it's still a bit of a reach, but not as much of a reach as trying to like head pat Nio. I'm 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 sure you you're definitely still smart and bright about other things. And just kind of shrugs. I don't need to be smart and bright. I was just an innkeeper. I just need to manage books and wait, make wait, sure no wait. one. You were an innkeeper, but you hadn't been an adventurer yet. That's a new one. I I mean, it was just a job. But I'm so used to, like, and I don't mean this in a bad way, every shopkeep, innkeeper, and 
and tavern owner we've met has had a can of whoop ass they've been ready to drop on us any second now. You're literally the first one I've met who I'm reasonably sure I could take in, an ar in a hoof wrestling competition. He stops for a second, and there's this almost visible light bulb that appears over his head. Oh, that... You're... That was my dad. Oh. He, um, he, he, he fits the descriptor. Yeah, it's his inn. I just work there. Yeah, because Cross Stitch had a gauze cannon. That hurt, by the way. Uh, Mad Mac has more kaboom and 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 firearms than an entire st an entire st Stallion Grad suburban block, um, <laughs> which is impressive. Um, uh, Mad Mac pets his firearms somewhere somewhere in the wasteland. Beatrice managed to knock Marker Light unconscious with a ladle and then followed it up with a frost axe to my shoulder. I mean, to be fair, Nyota nearly killed Martini just by punching him through a door. <laughs> Mountain is, well, his name should tell you everything you need to know. And Sparrow could literally German suplex Hans and Franz. Who you haven't met, but just imagine two giant germane ponies who can bench press cars for fun. And, like, you're like the first one who's like, I'm an innkeeper, and you can't murder us all? Well, now I understand why you wanted to go on adventure. You need to be like your dad was, where, like, somebody comes into the bar, and you just throw them through the wall for being insubordinate. He he kind of chuckles a little bit, but looks down at the floor, scuffing a huff. Oh, well, I'll never be anything like my dad. He was this really tough, strong, former, you know, former guardsman. Um, he, there was nothing he couldn't fight, nothing Open he couldn't mouth. face. What? Lifts his head up. Hun, you've made the first steps to becoming like the person you idolize. Don't trash talk yourself now. I'm I'm not trash talking myself. I am small and helpless. And yet you walked out into the wasteland following a gut instinct. You're still with us despite your apprehension towards me because of the tales you've heard from your town. And then you're finding out that some of those tales might not be true. You should be proud. Keep going where where you think is best. You're doing it the right way. Uh, well, I mean, the tales notwithstanding, I kind of just assumed you were a concentrated green ball of hatred and fury. No. I <laughs> go way out of my way to avoid confrontation. There's a reason why we just we sent Mythic and Medicinal and the rest of us made sure to stay far away. Like, your nearest patrol, when we found it, we went three miles the opposite direction. He just blinks a moment. Wait, you encountered a troll a, or a patrol and they didn't attack or take you in? Oh, Nyota's really stealthy. He just nods. Right. Like, that other zebra that you swear is here, but that I've only seen like three times. Yeah, but like, to illustrate this, if he doesn't want to be found, I have him tagged. You know how Pitbuck works with a tag, right? Nod. I have him tagged. She holds it up and points. See how the nod, tag has nod. a question mark? That spell should never do that. That's how stealthy he is. It is, in fact, currently flickering out in in this moment, as if the question in is it as if the target in question is moving in and out of the pit box detection range, which is absurd. Because he can't be more than a hundred feet away from you. How is that too far? It's a hundred feet. How see, is that too far? See, and then you can see Chifundo and Arcane. There's you, um, and Mythic, and the, and there's like, there's a couple up here that are out of range, but that's because like when they get back in range, I want to be able to see them. But yeah, I'm almost at the limit actually. I can only tag four more ponies. Huh? I need to get some more memory in this thing. I literally just made that up. That's not a game mechanic, but I'm assuming that there's a limit. Uh, having a limit. 
But well, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm laughing because you you took the words out of my mouth as I was nibbling on a pretzel. He just lifts a hoof. I I mean, it just yeah. sounds like you need to increase the limits or the memory size on that. Yeah, but we need, to, we need to find something Apple. that can go in it. Can I see it for a minute? She thinks about it. Well, you're going to be right here, and I'm assuming you're not going anywhere. She pulls out an Arcano key, which I don't even know if he's even seen one of those. You just ooze a little bit at the shiny hex key, because it's a really interesting shape. Plugs it in, presses the button, the key locks, she turns, and it pops off, and she gently picks it up. Now, remember, I really want this back, because it's really weird for me to not see a HUD in the rest of the world. She hands it, she, 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 she hooks it Onto the on, onto the nearest table, very gingerly, like like she's setting down the holy grail to her. The area on your leg that is that that no longer has a pit buck on it is now currently a little bit cold. She takes this opportunity to pull out a a, a, a bottle of dry shampoo and a wash rag and wash that section of her leg. That's good, because it, it will no longer now smell like belly button. Anyway, what's he gonna do? Uh, he just sits down, seems to poke and prod at it a little bit, flipping the thing over, looking it around, you hear the odd bit of old model or um, something about interesting design, but at the moment, it just seems that he's just really taking it all in. Um, kind of like a, a tech purist just getting a chance to look over some old school computing information. It would be like if you took a tech priest and just dropped them in the middle of um, of uh, Circuit, or not, well, not Circuit City, fucking Best Buy. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> I guess that's the end of my turn while I sit here and, and sit on edge waiting for him to finish poking at this. The pineapple is a very, very happy bean. Squeaky nerd noises. I almost want to assist, but I also want to let him have his face because I made him feel a little bit. He'll fucking, he'll fucking swat you. If you... <laughs> Like, as as he's working this thing over, if someone comes in within reach, it's just a hoof that comes out and wiggles in the general direction, like, away. Uh, alright, Nyota, it, it seems as if you have just appeared. I'm gonna get started on dinner. Okay. Um... There are more than enough things to prepare multiple meals here. Uh, there are not a lot of uh, spices. Uh, there's plenty of salt, but there's not a lot of spices, but there is uh, more than enough food. Well, it's lucky that I happen to have plenty of spices on me. Uh, actually... I need you to roll me in plus one. Nyota's token blink out of existence? <laughs> I mean, given what the description oh, okay. of his tag thing was, <laughs> that wouldn't be a miss. <laughs> All right. Um, please roll for me survival minus 30. I think that's uh, a decent pass. Wow. There's a lot of fresh crops in here. Hmm. He must have taken some of my lessons to heart. Like, there's some carrots, uh, some maize. It's really kind of like, it looks more like a corn nugget. But, you know, bits of maize, uh, some things that would do well in here. A lot of potatoes, a lot of tomatoes. 
um, various uh, gather. Uh, clearly, some there's clearly some food that looks like it was foraged, but there also appears some that is just unaffected by the wasteland. Hmm. Well, at the very least, I can get things started. So, um, I'm going to do my best to put together a um, mix of veg and some uh, tinned fruit that I drain off on the side and uh, make a halfway decent veggie stew to start. And then, um, out of curiosity, is there anywhere nearby where I could acquire some fish so that I could uh, make sure that there's some meat products available for uh, when Valor finally wakes back up. Give me a perception roll, please. I have been here before. Uh, as you start going around, going through the drawers, you just kind of move on to one and uh, move on to one and uh, open the drawer. Give me a luck check real. Give me a luck check as well. Fail by three. Okay. Um, uh, inside there are uh, pieces. Uh, they're, they're packed in a glass jar, um, but there are long strips of dried fish meat. Um, and uh, in one case, there is just half a fish that's been dried. You can still make out the uh, the 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 litany of small rib bones. Um, it also seems that in the bottom of the drawer, you can almost make out um, what appears to be an apple stem but it's fresh, as in this could not have been removed more than a couple of days ago. Okay. Well, once everything's all said and done, I'll uh, make sure to put together a decent meal for everyone and uh, set some of the, the materials aside so that when Valor finally wakes up, I can actually get around to uh, properly rehydrating the fish and making a, a good hearty fish stew for him. Um, he is a... He is conscious, but is, um... Or, he is back, but he is currently kind of in and out of sleep. You could go and wake him without any real effort. Yeah, but I know after having experienced it myself, after remembering, experiencing it myself, I remember that uh, waking up after going through that generally is not something I wanted to be woken up from. I wanted to wake up of my own volition. Yeah. Um. All right. Are you doing anything other than prepping dinner for the evening? Or prepping a meal? No, I, I'm assuming it's going to come as something of a shock to the rest of the party when the kitchen starts, you know, acting up of its own volition, and it starts smelling good. Um, at one point in time, Pineapple just turns around. Why is the kitchen haunted? Wait. Looks down at the pit buck device. Looks back over to the kitchen. Looks back over to the pit. No, it is in the kitchen. Pit buck device. Looks back over to the kitchen. I should be able to see him, shouldn't I? No. I assure you, no. As uh, much give me a as... moment. There is this off 
Ooh, spooky kitchen. Yes, I literally say that out loud. Pineapple just kind of frumps. Your husband's a butt. <laughs> she looks at him. He's my butt, though. And also, okay. and also, you know, that's, I think, the first time you haven't referred, to, you've referred to him as my husband and not as a zebra. He just stops and kind of blinks. Oh no, I'm going native. No, no, no. When you start referring to him by his name, then I'll really smile. He just kind of looks back up at you. Give me time. I'm, uh, I'm still adjusting to all of these different species. Um, let's see. As Chifundo's connection just tanked. Uh, Hayes is back. Um, I'm going to step away for just a minute. I need to bio real quick. Bio, stretch legs, take a fiver. Yep. Everybody, uh, we will reconvene at uh, 10 after. 15 if, you know, some people have to take longer, but we'll take our intermission now. Uh, again, thank you guys for all the support. Uh, I do have to pay my rent tomorrow, as well as I need to get the rest of the money built up for the books. Um, so any help tonight's appreciated. Also, Moon has had like two weeks and hasn't been paid by anybody for GMing. So maybe we can, uh, maybe we can also help him out because remember I share the uh, proceeds from tonight with Moon. In the meantime, uh, I'm gonna get up as well and set you guys to some music. Some music that I made, so Twitch bots don't yell at me. This is my music. Oh. I made it. I own it. I even have copyrights for it. Oh, I like, my little party a little like bad. that'll like that'll have any impact on those DMCA bots. What it is because they're only a, they're only allowed DMCA you on uh, things that the the box owners have to in, have uh, legal rights over. Anything else and officially that's a false DMCA claim. I'm trying to be better but still miss the mark And each time I save you I'm left in the dark No When, when you're, you're in trouble, trouble I'll be by your side My love for you ain't gonna hide And stop returning A penance and pain in a body left late But inside the fire keeps burning Calling. The rivers run dry neath a blackened out sky, and all the dead trees are falling. Face will seek, will judgment, our mercy, or grace. Decision is needed for those who survive of whether you'll be left alive. 
And all bloody work for a hope that we hold Of past golden age and its story still told And, and what sacred virtues we're able to heed To bring back to those who are in need The future is daunting It's going to be shaped by the choices we make And those of the ghosts that are born Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that has saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now. was blind but now I see it was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears will
Welcome back. Hello. I'm here. Scree. Scree. Yeah. 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 Wait to make it sound disgusting. Oh, but miso soup is so perfect. Slowly dry. I didn't say it was. I didn't say it was. I said it sounded. Miso soup is fine as long as it doesn't have mushrooms. Miso soup is fine. It even works for prison escapes. Okay. Huge context context gap there. No, no, it's a trap. Uh, um, there was a there was a guy who um, used miso soup and used the salt in it to rot and rust away the iron of his prison cell door and his handcuffs to escape. What the hell? Miso soup has such a high quantity of salt in it that when poured across metal, it causes uh, an oxidizing effect that will actually, over the course of about two weeks, rust all the way through. Oh. So he was literally pouring his miso soup onto his handcuffs and around the edges of his food door and the actual onto the actual door lock, and then one night the door simply fell open. Because the it could no longer hold itself shut from the rust. And then he walked out. Fascinating. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Holy shit! That's a lot of miso soup.
I took him about two weeks, and he made sure that he got miso soup for lunch every single day for two weeks. That cannot have been good for his heart if there's that much salt in there. <laughs> oh, miso soup's totally not good for you to eat in that quantity, but he wasn't eating it. He was pouring it onto the metal pieces in his cell in order to... Uh, he was both pouring on it and spit it in, putting it in his mouth and spitting on it in order to, to rot away the cell door. Quite clever. Anyway, I believe everyone is here. Did anyone not answer roll call? No, I think everyone's back. The gang's all here. Okay. Talking stick is yours, Moon. <clears throat> all right. Chifundo. Hello. 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 Hello there. Hi. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. can you be? Okay. <clears throat> God damn it. Um, all right. So around this table, there is um, what you're probably sure is. No. Shit. That's the point. Did did we move the table back into the <laughs> into the keep? <laughs> you know what? No. No one has moved the table back inside. There are just two chairs and a large dog in the space of the table. <laughs> um So we're but, having a picnic yes. under the cloudy sky. So there appears to be some phantasmal creature that is making dinner. Um, there appears to be an incredibly spirited, uh, an incredibly spirited yellow stallion examining a pit buck. There is an incredibly anxious green mare about a foot away, staring nervously at the pit buck. There is a lore horse who's just simply vibing. Um, and then you're pretty sure that somewhere... Hayes is also simply vibing. But that's not important. What's important is, what is Chifundo doing? Um, honestly, at the minute, I haven't got much of a plan for Chifundo. Um, so, yeah, I guess he's kind of If he's got nothing else to particularly occupy, he's just going to sort of not necessarily meditate because he's still going to be aware of his surroundings. But uh, yeah, he's going to be kind of in that semi meditative state. Okay. Kind of essentially going into Trifondo standby mode. <laughs> Ah, I see. All right, so Chifundo is just in uh, power save mode. Glorious. Pretty much. Except instead of a little red blinking light, it's a little pink blinking light. Holy shit, so much shit. Okay, uh, I guess then that leads us back to... Uh, um, I guess that leads back to Mythic, unless you were going to do something in uh, the Chifundo zone. No, no. He's... If somebody says something that catches his interest, and obviously he'll kind of step into the conversation, but other than that, yeah, no, he's just gonna exist. 
Okay. Mythic. Present. Um, it seems that everyone, although you uh, can tell someone has made their way outside to the top of the tower, seems that everyone has gone inside. Where is Mythic? Where is Mythic? Well, he's standing there, kind of calming down, kind of coming to terms here. Realizes he probably needs to go talk to somebody. Thinks about going. He thinks about going to talk to Chefando. Just someone, anyone to kind of blow off a little bit of steam. You know what? He's going to search out Hayes. Give if me, nothing else, <clears throat> give me a perception check. Okay, oh, there's you can, my ball. Okay, you can smell that haze is on top of the tower. Well, with that, he'll uh, kind of slowly make his way on up the tower. If nothing else, maybe he'll get some of that zebra weed, chill out. Reconsider his standing. I was going to say, is he going to head inside the tower and then go up the stairs, or is he just going to scale the tower? As fun as it would be to flex and just make a shield stair up, he will go in through the tower up the proper way. He's still lacking a bunch of strain, too, today. All right, I'm just going to move him up here, then. Okay. Um, at the top of the tower, Hayes is sitting in a comfy chair. There is a small haze of haze around Hayes. I'll kind of walk up the stairs, kind of rub his head a little bit. Uh, Ace, you wouldn't happen to have a spare zebra weed roll on you, would you? Sure. Here. Basically, passes him the one that he just lit and goes to lap another one. Hayes, do you have a spare drugs? Is my name Hayes? He kind of takes it, he hesitates for a moment, and he's like, you know, and then if I, if I live a life, he will light it. And he'll try to take a drag out of it and take a nice deep sigh. Ah, thanks. I have not been very, feeling very well in the head today. Roll endurance. Okay, he doesn't cough like a bitch. Awesome. All right, keep going. Yeah, what's on your mind? I got into a fight with Sunrise, and honestly, I'm just not feeling very good about the entire ordeal. Mm. You know, you've probably been with the group longer than I have. Honestly, that's a little one little mare that seems to have a lot on. You are cutting out really bad, by the way. No, uh, well, that's kind of how I talk. Like, All right, there, no, there no you the your your mm. your audio was cutting out. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll it wasn't. Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll just try to speak up a little bit. I was like, yeah, that's one little mare with a lot of weight on her shoulders. So what were you arguing about? 
Well, kind of dealing with the fact that she just outright said that she's disgusted with me. Tried to not, not make my point or anything, but tried to explain, tried to talk it out, got a little heated. Had some thing, had some things that have been on my mind since I started traveling with them, and yeah, it didn't end very well. Well, has been. Well, mythic, mythic kind of sit down. At this point, he's probably a hell of a lot more calmer. As he kind of just slowly explains the things that have happened up to this point. All of them. You might actually the good, the bad. explain those things. Yeah, speak this out loud. Don't. Do not Why assume you... I know anything. Oh boy! All right. Um. Well, see, I first met them in the caravan. They seemed, you know, just kind of your weird ponies. Travel around with them a little bit. Kind of. Give me a minute. Let my brain come up with the words here. Started traveling around with them a little bit. Um, she said she had said and done some things with someone that was traveling with the party before I, you or I, had joined the party. She said some. She had said and done some things to this pony that really bugged me. Kind of went on and on about his love life and a bunch of other stuff that he did wrong right in front of a bunch of strangers. And I don't know. It just kind of brought back a lot of bad memories. I see. And it kind of went on from there. Uh, honestly, she, was, she kind of confuses. She kind of confused me and still kind of confuses me. She does that. She turns around. And she does something nice. She seems like a nice pony with her head in the right in the right spot. Her heart is in the right place. She does that. She turns around and she said some things. She also said some things. She said she really cared about this pony. She liked him despite all of that. And as I had, by the way, my struggling words are because I'm trying to remember all of the events up till now and sort all my thoughts. So forgive me, ladies and gentlemen. It's fine. Take your time. So, she, so my impressions of Thurs start with her insulting this pony, of her laying bare this pony's various shortcomings. Kind of embarrassing, really. I didn't say anything at the time because, honestly, they were just a group that had just joined the caravan, and I didn't feel like it was my place at the time, but it struck me as odd. Then she turned around, said some nice things to this pony, and honestly seems like she deeply cares about these ponies, but... And then that continued up until we got to a bridge. Uh, there was a troll bridge full of some ponies that me and the caravan, because I had been traveling with this, no, no, I've been traveling with this caravan since before her group started with us. And these ponies that we had come across at this bridge, me and the caravan had run into them before. We traded some words, and it ended in blows, and we had essentially run them off that first time. Well, this time she walked forward and was trying to negotiate with them, saying that, pardon me, this is the part where I'm a little, little foggy on the details here. I think that she had offered at that point to just simply pay the toll or negotiate some way around. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong or add in the details there. Um, I remember there were offerings to pay, but it, there were also uh, shows of force as well. 
but otherwise you were about right. All right, just I want to make sure I'm getting all of this right because it's a little foggy in my head. All right, so that happens. She goes, she goes, she goes forward. And she tries tries to talk to these ponies, these ponies that we know was weren't exactly taking very kindly to us and had doubled the doubled the toll since the last time we ran into them. For reasons that are probably obvious, we sent them with their sent them running with their tail between their legs. Uh, I saw things were going south because she, it seemed like she was losing this diplomacy ordeal, and everyone was readying for a struggle. There was definite show of force. I kind of took matters into my own host there, walked up and tried to scare them off, but scare them into being a little bit more open to these diplomacies. Yeah, it didn't quite work out very well. And in the end, she, um, she uh, this, this little mare essentially had us go around them over this huge gorge with one of her allies floating everyone over. So... She avoided bloodshed, but you don't think that was the right decision. That about no, cover it, sum it up? Yeah, that about sums it up. I personally was worried about them just simply coming after us, and the fact that we just kind of shied away with our tails between our legs that time, it didn't sit well with me all things considered, especially knowing that these ponies were simply just going to extort the next people that come, came through, or worse. But so, it was a moot point. So you were kind of looking for a more permanent solution to the whole bandit thing, huh? I get, I can get that, but does that necessarily uh, mean she was wrong? I mean, did, did you, was there more than, uh, well, she did turn around and slap me after all of that. During the talks, after I had tried to intimidate them. Uh, maybe you think about it this way. Yeah, that's, yeah, they're bandits. They're likely to try the next same scheme on the next person. But on the other hand, how many ponies were in that group versus how many ponies were in, with your caravan? Well, we could have taken them, but I see your point. It's... Well, then oh. after that, there was the bunker, and that was a whole other can of worms. Oh, no, sorry, go ahead. No. No, keep going. Well, then after that, there was the bunker. Remember what I said about that the pre the previous pony that was traveling with our group that she had done all that too. That that uh, Martini Parker light. Yeah, it was Martini Parker light. Oh, okay. Well, there was a bunker after that that we had all set up at, and apparently Martini knew what this bunker was. She was of the sunrise was of the uh, there's a word here. <laughs> sunrise was of the school of thought of the opinion that we should probably just leave the, leave the place. It wasn't important. Martini wasn't exactly clear on how uh, how or why this place was terribly important. But it was apparently important, and it was important to his past. And it might have had something that would have helped us all. 
So he kind of tried to go in there by himself. Consid although considering the fact that he apparently had the clearance to go in, it wasn't all of that all that risky. But what happened next was Sunrise essentially insisted that we all go in after him and that he not go in alone. And... Okay, Brain, come on, don't drop this point on me. That wasn't bad, bad in of itself. It was the way that she did it. She made this big deal about him going into this place and wanting to check this place out and him saying that it was important to his past, but he couldn't remember why. What? And now, once again, I'm a little fuzzy on the details. Which kind of ties in to the fuck situation, isn't it? Something like that. They all have past lives, and apparently this was a really important part in his. And I think the place itself tied into the whole situation somehow, and it, or ended up tying into the whole situation somehow. But Sunrise kind of got on to him for all of that and kind of really pressed the point to a pressed the, the, the problem and the point to a point where it seems excessive, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Well, anyways, we ended up going inside. We did some stuff. She had made a really, she did a really odd thing where she started singing after he essentially finally sat down and told us that he couldn't re he couldn't remember exactly what was important about this place or what all had happened here, but he had wanted to go in so he could remember. And then she started singing. Honestly, I'm not really sure what that was. Well, there's nothing good wrong about singing, you know. But, but, but what was she singing? Uh, something about opening up your eyes, letting go of the past, trusting others. It was kind of oddly directed at the fact that he didn't feel comfortable or wasn't quite clear on the details or telling all the rest of us the stuff. It was weird, to be honest. But during the whole time, she was really, really hard on him about all of this. Mm -hmm. And you don't really think that was fair? It didn't really feel fair on Martini. Well... You said to yourself you were pretty new to the group. You must have been a fair bet to the situation you weren't aware of. Yeah, it all seemed really off to me. Of course, again, I hadn't been with the group long enough, and I did not know the details, so I kept quiet for the most part. Mm. But, but all all in all, she was she was really hard and seemed really mean on this Martini fellow. And he hadn't really done anything terribly wrong up to this point. No. Uh, well, my gut tells me there's probably something deeper going on than uh, you really realize. But 
oh yeah, Martini did insist nobody follow him in because he would he he knew and he did mention that he did have the clearance. It was afraid that the turrets would target him. Well, if there were defenses, that's good enough reason for me not to it. Yeah, Sunrise insisted that we all go in and after him anyways. Mm. Ain't that not, not the sort of thing you do when if it's somebody you don't care about? You know, sounds... Oh, just my my gut was telling me there was some degree of uh, tough love going on. Possibly so. Maybe a little too tough, but uh, maybe that was just me. Yeah. So well, we did end up going through the... Oh, I'm sorry. What happened at this ins- that at this base, this installation? Well, we did end up going through it. We took out a bunch of turrets, or some turrets out of the ceiling. That was fun. Went through it, found some stuff about Martini's past, found some stuff linking to my sword, actually, of all weird things. And honestly, we all made out like bandits. Apparently there was a large stockpile of supplies and uh, weapons there. Yeah, I've been curious. What's so important about that sword? Any? Well, <laughs> funny thing. I'm not terribly sure what exactly it is that is important about this sword. What I do know is that it's. An old town heirloom, something that's been around, that the town was made around, and we've been guarding for god eons. Hey, Mythic. Yeah? I need you to make me both, uh, I need you to make me a perception check um, at a, actually, perception check at base. Okay. Well, there you go. You have something scratching in the back of you. You have something itching in the back of your head, but you're not really 100% sure what. I know that there was a lot of a lot of old stories surrounding the sword and kind of the part where we had a whole we had a whole honor guard as it were for the thing. And yeah, I had passed our one of I had passed our test to be an honor guard. Not something I quite wanted. But what I do know is it's something old, something powerful, and something that we've been keeping around for somebody to come back for. Hmm. Well... I would assume his internet just dropped, that someone's internet just dropped off the face of the earth. <laughs> yep. Uh, okay. no, Mine's good. Time. Continue. The uh, shadow, I think, dropped out. Oh, he just dipped. Okay. So, sounds like the sword going missing is more just a. Excuse to go out on your own? Yeah, that's what I told Sunrise, too. I told myself when I left that it was for the sword. It was for some noble. And maybe that's kind of what it started as when I left. But really, at the end of the day, I think I really just honestly used it as an excuse to leave. I'd always wanted to go out and have an adventure, you know? Slay, slay a beast, be, be a hero, all that fun, vague jazz. I wanted to go have an adventure. 
I wanted to go see things, do things. And with the sword being missing and taken, that was a perfect a perfect chance for me to leave. So yeah, I volunteered to go after it. And that's where this is led you. It's been a trip. Mm -hmm. Helping sla helping slavers, fighting those self same slavers, meeting a meeting a strange zebra mare, learning spirit stuff, uh, joining a few caravans, learning what it means to actually be in uh, as a part of it. Yeah, learning learning what camaraderie means, all of that fun hero stuff. Granted, not quite what I expected the entire time, but. Yeah. I can't say I regret rarely. leaving. Yeah, Wasteland rarely is. So you do you do have more in common with our uh, little pineapple downstairs. It kind of sheepishly strips, uh, rubs the back of his mane. Yeah. Needless to say, I kind of, I don't know, I kind of see where he's coming from. And I didn't want to discourage that, you know, especially knowing kind of how I ended up. And I mean, it's not like I hate Sunrise or anything, or any of her group for that matter. I can tell us that she cares her about the ponies around her and a whole lot more. It's just the way that she expresses it sometimes and the way that she acts, it brings back some bad memories of some other ponies that I used to kick around with. Watch, uh... Think about it like this. Because the way she tells it, and, you know, she, her memory, last memory before waking up in this wasteland was waking up in a stable, or was, was in a stable. No. Now, not not everybody has the same old world sensibilities. These. So this was probably a pretty good shock to her, and I think she's adapted pretty well to the wasteland she's found herself in. You know, yeah, she she must be doing something right if Nyota and Shifundo stick around. Maybe if you sit back a little bit and watch, maybe you'll see a little bit of what they see. Maybe if you show a little tr more trust in her, she'll show a little more trust in you. You know how that kind of give and take goes. At this point, Hayes finishes his smoke, kind of drops it to the stone, stamps it out. Oh, by the way, Beller said he wanted to talk to you. He's kind of in and out of it, but... 
maybe he'd be a good person to try to get some additional perspective. Oh, right. Valor. Uh, you sure he's going to be all right? I didn't, you know, get too much or too hard, did I? Something tells me without this weird box stuff going on, Valor's one tough bird regardless of what you did to him. He'll be just fine. I mean, I was even going to try a life surge on him if I had actually... I was actually about to do a life surge on him until you mentioned that he had still, was still alive. Uh, yeah, I should probably go talk to him next to them. Sounds like a plan to me. Okay. All right. I was going to say, after you finish up that chat, I'm going to switch to Arcane. I've been waiting patiently. Very good. I've got the opportunity to work on some other stuff that I need to get done. Uh, right. Pineapple's working on the thing. I don't think I have anything I can do on my turn. I guess he will... I was going to say, you're... Oh, yeah. I mean, it, in front of you, Pineapple's just working over the pit bucket. It seems like he's trying to get at the, um, the memory panel, but it's not very... Uh, aggressive work but yeah he's just kind of still rotating that thing um yeah. at the table or at the spot where the table should be yeah he already made the wiggly hoof of give me space so he's giving him space you probably just keep reading his magazine i guess and relax on the foofer okay. on the boofer i i really can't think of much to do for my turn that's fine Sometimes it's like that. All right. Um, well, medicinal. After you finish that, are you just heading downstairs to rejoin everyone, or are you going to find a new place to be alone? I think. I think he's ready to just head back downstairs. Join the rejoin. The others. Okay. Um. It uh, it appears that dinner is cooking itself. Oh, what you making, Nyota? Just simple veggie stew. Mm. Got Sounds some uh, fish set up to uh, rehydrate so that when uh, Valor is up and mobile again, he can uh, have some to eat too. You should head up to the to the. Battlement? I think that's the right word. Battlement sometimes. It's really neat up there. You can even see a settlement. I think I might take you up on that later. Right now, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people to feed. That is if the dog eats anything. Thankfully, no. The dog does not eat anything. The, the dog is a construct. Yeah, Nyota doesn't know that. <laughs> that was still definitely a valid question. You had to make me pause, too. See, we're learning new things about how magical constructs work. Uh, anywho. Yeah, it's, uh, as soon as uh, dinner is all taken care of, I will more than happily... Uh... Take some time out under the stars. Sounds good. 
Hayes reaches into his pack and produces some uh, some fresh veggies. Oh, that'll make a nice side. Yep. You want to do the prep or shall I? No, yeah, I'll take care of it. Sounds good. All right. Well, I mean, it's just simple stew. It's nothing special. So if you're willing to take over, I think I might actually take you up on uh, heading out and just relaxing for a little bit. Certainly. I can. I can take care of that for you. No problem. The vague shadow that happens to be Nyota gradually uh, steps out of the kitchen and makes his way upstairs. All right. Um, sunrise, as I said, uh, Pineapple is just sitting at, at sitting in the chair where the table should be. Um, and it seems that he's found at least where the... Uh, more than likely the, the memory access panel is on the thing having um, it's not, the panel isn't off as he is not working with any tools, but he's just okay, that's where it is, and mumbling a bit to himself as he flips it over, uh, more than anything seemingly trying to get a feel for if this one is set up any differently from other pit bucks but he finally looks back to you, um, I I could probably help you expand the memory somewhat. Um, we'd have to find some parts, but I've tinkered. Did okay, I didn't mute myself. Today? Oh, heard you. V? Yes. I don't have um, anything. I'm going up to the table to get something to eat with everybody else. Yeah, no, <laughs> I'm just saying that Pineapple has not damaged or broken the pit buck and seems to think that he might be able to do a little bit with it. But aside from that, yeah, it's safe. Uh, and yeah, there's food. Okay, she'll uh, reach up for the pit buck and go, we'll uh, talk about what you think you can do after dinner and try to, like, put it back on her wrist. He relinquishes it with a little bit of a huff. Just kind of TKs it over to the wrist. It's okay. You can look at it again later. I just... It's so weird not being surrounded by tech out here in the wilds. Well, it's not really the wilds. Well, I suppose it's the wild to you. I am used to running water in a flush toilet. I am yeah. in the middle of, as my dad would say, I am in the middle of bumblefuck nowhere. Yeah, I, I imagine to you, this is the wilds. To me, this is, um, not that bad. Normal. Normal. He just kind of grumbles in city noises, but drops it. <sighs> she gives him. She, she, she offers a hug. Do, do you want a hug? He will tentatively take the hug. Um, it, it isn't so much that he doesn't hug, that he doesn't hug. He just didn't want to seem overly clingy or overly uh, sentimental. That's the word. But yeah, the hug is taken. He is a good hugger. Okay. It's more that he's just like snug. That doesn't want to be clingy. Just had to be pried off the zebra. Okay. 
doesn't want to seem clingy towards a married mare. Just doesn't want to seem clingy, period, because then people will think that he's weak. She releases the hug and looks at him and goes, you know, it's okay to give hugs, right? Like, just ask first. Well, I, I know it's okay to give hugs. I just didn't know if things were different in the rough and tumble outside world. Not terribly so. I mean, there's going to be some more adjustments, but worst case, I mean, you eventually learn just to make sure that they're not raiders, slavers, or or have another reason to shoot you in the head, and then, you know, you make friends. And sometimes you don't learn that first, and you have to deal with it later. There's a look of horror on his face as you just casually mention. Yeah, I mean, dude, occasionally you just get shot in the head, but you deal with it later. Just utter horror. She picks up her helmet and looks it over and then starts pointing at places she's repaired. And going over how that particular, why that particular repair had to happen. And looks at I was person. gonna say I was gonna say that particular headshot left a boba left a boba fett dent in the helmet. By the way, yeah, I had to fix it, but yeah, th there's still like the markings that there was a dent there at one point. Oh yeah, you short of recasting that helmet, you'll never be able to fully get that dent out. But she just starts going over the various marks and goes, "Look, pineapple. The point is, you are surrounded by friends who don't mind if you hug them or." suddenly feel that you have to hold uh, you you need to be held okay he just looks up when are we're, we're friends confused horse noises i don't consider you an enemy and i certainly uh, think of you as more than an associate oh okay um i just kind of assumed that you were begrudgingly stuck on towny duty no, I'm just trying not to um, put you too far into the deep end too fast. Blink, 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 there's, blink, blink. there's a very small voice that just mutters back, wait, this isn't the deep end? Um, I know that every day you're probably going to learn something new. That might upset you. And every day you're probably going to learn something new that will make you happy. Because that's how my days have been since I woke up in the pool. T nods, trying to take that all in, and just slowly makes his way to the dog. Still listening to you, but just dog. But I also know that you have all the signs of eventually starting to... Um, I guess the term is do what your dad did and defend others and be that adventurer that you idolized him to be yourself. It's just not going to happen tomorrow or the next day. It might happen in a couple weeks. It might happen in a year, but eventually I honestly kind of see that in you. He pulls himself away from the dog a little bit, looks up to sunrise and chuckles. I'm glad that you see that in me because, well, the only thing that I see in me right now is bullet wounds. She boops him on the nose. Those two, but those happen later. Quietly scrunches down to the dog. <laughs> That's my turn. Hey, Nyota, you make it back up to the top of the tower, and you can very clearly tell that Medicinal was up here. Um, and as you make your way up, it seems that Mythic is still up here. Alright. Well, I'm gonna make it 
fairly obvious now that I am coming up the stairs. And I shake myself out and <laughs> I, I actively drop self so I'm visible. And make my way over to the edge of the roof. And proceed to break out a pack of cigarettes that's been in my saddlebags for quite some time. And take a moment to really just look at them for a while. Are you looking at, what are you looking at specifically? The pack of cigarettes. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, they're the, um, the brand that you last smoked They're I think these are the ones that were still in shrink. Um, there's a, or at least in spots, there's a thin layer of dust, but it's clearly been, uh, it's clearly been wiped away while inside your bag. They do have that aged tobacco smell. It's even through the... Um... Oh, right. They wouldn't have had shrink. Even through um, whatever the wrapper is, it uh... it still has a fairly... Uh... Hi, hi, hi. Fairly this bag of hugs for five dollars. It's cold. Okay, that was funny. And, you know, I'll, I'll contemplate them for a while as I just kind of, like, look over at Mythic and... So, she gave you a hard time. He kind of lets out a sigh, tosses the blunt away, or tosses the blunt down, rather, and kind of uh, quenches it with his huff and just kind of shakes his head, shrugs a little bit. Yeah, a little bit of a hard time, but maybe I'm to blame, too. Uh, you know, there are times where she can just be a little bit too much old world and not enough new world. There are positives and negatives to both, but... She does seem a little hard-headed. Nothing terribly wrong with it, but... Hi, hi, hi! This bag of hugs for five dollars! Yeah. Oh! All things considered... Okay, that was funny. You know, we all have our strengths, we all have our weaknesses, and honestly, hers is still dealing with the wasteland as the wasteland and not the wasteland as a potential for the new old world. Yay! Yeah, perhaps it just comes from more along the lines of I just I'm just not quite sure how to handle her. Well, again, the point I'm trying to make is, is that you've lived in this world and known it as the wasteland. Sure, there might be bits and pieces from the old world that you've inter interacted with, but you didn't live in the old world. She did. That up until her memories started to come back of the time between then and now, that was who she was. That was the world she grew up in. To see, and I wave my hoof out across the, the wasteland in, in general, to see all of this yeah, she's, even though she's tougher than she was, she's still adjusting. A mare out of time having to adjust to such a dramatic change. Yeah, I could see that. I... <sighs> and I get the feeling that a couple of her, a couple of the lessons that she's taken to heart have been not quite the best. Especially about being really, really harsh on people on, on occasions. That being said, yeah, the one individual in question 
no, I personally think she made the right call with that. It was probably for the best that he left. Uh, yeah. Um, about that, his time with us was problematic. Not bad, just... I take it it wasn't an isolated case. Mm, no. Lots of self-deprecation, lots of moments where just had no idea what he was thinking or why he was thinking that. And then, of course, going to the point where we eventually had to part ways with him. Just in general, not being a trusting individual. A pony that just does without thinking. Yeah. And despite my better judgment, I'm going to go here and say there are some aspects that he displayed that she sees in you. And I see them too, but you temper them better. Admittedly, I still have a lot to learn. I mean, if you stop learning, you're probably dead, so... Learning is just a natural state. Suppose my problem is I was raised and trained to deal with the, with problems with conflicts directly rather than attempt to avoid them yeah and that's where things differ for sunrise sunrise will go out of her way to try and use the diplomatic method over the might makes right uh, method Maybe it just comes down to our personalities clashing. Perhaps not a bad thing, but I guess I could stand to stand down a little bit. And in cases where you know what's going on and you know that violence is the only answer that we could reach, make sure you explain it. To be completely fair, the number of times I've bucked somebody's head in without consulting her first and then explaining myself after the fact has definitely eased some of the tensions between us well at least before we got married don't forget that one pony whose head got actual distance yeah one of the cleaners I was going to say, that was one of the cleaners. Yeah, we didn't have a lot of choice in that one. <laughs> Literal fucking distance. Yeah, that, that, yeah. that was that was post-Lost Pegasus, uh, New Pegasus. Yeah, that was on your way back. I think that was what, a nat one buck to the head? It was good shit. One of these days. One of these days. Bam! Pow! Straight to the moon! That was still the most damage that a single blow has ever done. It even still trumps Moon's sniper rifle. He sent that pony to the moon. Not not the body, but like the head. No, I'm I thinking mean, about the head get it continuing living and just becoming the space core from Portal. No, no, hey. no, no. At most, at most, that brain would have been alive long enough to, you know, see the moon through a thinner atmosphere. It would have been close to hitting escape velocity and then the fact that it is a severed head would have kicked in and then no more escape velocity. But yeah, that because... head, like, no, it, 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 it's not on the planet anymore. Low geosynchronous orbit. It'll eventually make it back down, but it, it, it's in a decaying orbit right now. It'll probably hit somebody in the head. Does that still count as a headbutt? Yeah, anyway. 
<sighs> Maybe I still just need to find my place in this group, too. Assuming, you know, you all still wish for me to be around. I don't see a reason why you shouldn't travel with us. Personally, while well, I guess I would have started on this on this with y'all on more selfish purposes, it's, from what I can tell, something rather serious, and if it's really worth Questria threatening, world threatening, uh, I feel like I should help it regardless. Well, in that case... You know, maybe you should make that clear. I mean, do forgive my eavesdropping, but I did happen to catch a fair bit of the conversation, and you both make good points about each other. Sunrise can be a stubborn ass, but you're both on the same wavelength for that. And that's probably why we don't get along quite as well as we should. I mean, <sighs> I don't know. It worked out pretty well for me at first. That argument was like watching two mules go at it. Ah! <laughs> if, if Twitty had actually said that, you know, out loud in real time. Mayota probably would have responded with, uh, no, actually, it just reminded me of some of the arguments Sunrise and I had early on. I did make myself look pretty stupid during that argument. Well, there's an easy fix. Do I have to go back and talk to her? I mean... Apologize. She should probably, you know, own up and do the same, but you know, never hurts to admit when you've said or done something wrong. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Any particular tips that you can give me? Be open, be honest, take your time, don't, don't rush out the, the apology. I mean, I mean, I tend to seek forgiveness rather than permission more often than not. So I've just gotten accustomed to occasionally apologizing when things go wrong and it's my fault. Well, it is easier to ask for forgiveness than permission. Well, I mean, that and I may or may not have managed to put together an army to assault a raptor to rescue her from the enclave. So, you know, that's probably a point in my favor. I can't tell. I still feel awkward about that. And yeah. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to stick a sticky note on that because I need to come back and hear that because that sounds like a cool story. Yeah, until you get to the body count. I take it it's um quite a sizable amount. Yeah, and more than a couple friends. Ah. Part of the reason uh, we didn't get on with M uh, Martini at the start was, um, well, he took the place of somebody that meant a lot to all of us. Oh, Glossel, right? Yeah. Yeah. And whether Sunrise will, you know, Accept it or not, I still take responsibility for that because, well, I'm the one that put the, the plan together. And it, well, ended with the intended result, but also 
Yeah, lost somebody that was becoming a good friend. Well, at least you'll probably see them again, right? Yeah, but that's the thing. Sometimes when we wake up from, well, box, we don't remember what happened before. I don't know if this is a temporary thing because of the whole dead tree whatever happened, or if it's going to happen every time. That still gives me a headache every time I think about it. Oh, yeah. Tell me about it. You at least get to know that you've got one go around and you don't have to worry about trying to figure out if you did something terrible in your previous lives. But I don't know. It just seems better to me that you get multiple chances at something rather than just you get one shot and if you fuck up, well, um, that's it. I mean, there are positives and negatives to both sides of the argument. Anyway, I came up here for a little bit of relaxation, and uh, also I didn't see you downstairs, so I figured you were probably somewhere, and uh, wanted to let you know dinner's ready. Or, mostly ready. I think Hayes is finishing up side dishes. All right, now you're talking. I do not add any extra herbs to the dinner. Oh, no I suspicious seasoning. And I hope uh, I hope you don't mind spicy. Not like really spicy, just enough to add a little bit of zip to it. I like a little kick in my food. Sunrise will be disappointed that you Ooh. didn't make it melt her face. That that wording. <laughs> just got that. You're welcome. And Jesus. um, if if you like a little kick in your food, um. Well, yeah, I, know in the food. Mar- I, I know a mare in, in yellow sign that would probably be more than happy to give you a kick with your food, but she'd probably kill you doing it. All right. Um, no offense, Nyota, but I'm going to draw a line at getting a kick with my food. Um, you've already broken me of that one. Anyway. Go enjoy. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a minute and uh you know just take a minute and think about it and if you feel the need to apologize to, to Sunrise for what happened, do so. I think I will. Thanks. Uh by the way, um but you don't seem very sure about my magic. Yeah, I'm not sure how else to word that. Well, yeah, I generally don't deal well with magic. It doesn't really feel right to me. I guess it's the whole nature of I what I deal with, what Chifundo deals with. We're both kind of on that. He's more on the line of like traditionalism and actually figuring out, you know, how to make things work together and In my case, it's less about helping spirits to work together for a purpose. And in my case, it's trying to figure out how the future is going to work out for me and Ember. Very, very much focused on me, you know, her and I and what we can do with our power, as opposed to Chifundo, who tends to work really well with most of the spirits around him. And so, up until fairly recently, the boxes were just a magical annoyance that I had to deal with, and now, knowing that they're legitimately arcane and shamanistic magic blended together, well... I'm opening up to the idea of magic again. Well, 
if you ever feel like it, I could probably at least try to explain thing, a thing or two to you. Maybe actually properly talk to you about magic and how it works. And what it is that you keep offering to us in, you know, the midst of combat instead of well ahead of time and explaining what it is. Is uh, it's really, really awkward to suddenly hear, you know, hey, I can I can help you out with that. And I have no idea how you're going to help me out with that. I kind of grin sheepishly at that. I'm kind of just used to ponies at least knowing so much as a boost or something. But perhaps I should take the time to actually explain it to you lot. You know, after I have a good night's rest because, wow, that sword is heavy and I think it just knocked something loose in my head. Well, and I wave Mythic over. Come over here and give me a good look. Just kind of kind of shrug and walk over. All right. Sit down. Look into my eyes. Eyebrow raise slowly sits. All right. I'm going to hold up a hoof and... All right, now I want you to follow my hoof with my uh, with your eyes, not with your head. And I'm I'll... sorry, are you giving him a medical examination right after he's had zebra weed? Don't yes. worry about it. <laughs> he's, and... not test he's not testing to see if you're baked like a cake. He's testing to see if you have any brain damage. Yeah, like, this is typical concussion methodology is... If you can follow simple commands and you're not seeing double, you're probably okay. He'll, he'll kind of shrug and he'll do so. All right. And Moon, do you want me to roll medicine? I do. Any penalties or bonuses? Uh, yes. Uh, negative 10. Because he's stoked. Be because no matter how much light you shine into his eyes, you're still going to be able to blind him with a strand of thread. Um, oh. So aside from the fact that his pupils are just completely and utterly unresponsive, uh, there don't really seem to be any true signs of a concussion. Um, there is a spot on his uh, a spot on his head where, even though the shield protected it, there still is a sort of crease of energy where the blow uh, impacted the skin slightly. Um, and there's another very similar spot on his back, uh, although this one is a bit larger. And uh, it's very clear that if he did not block or shield himself or whatever, you uh, someone would need to sew Mythic back together. He would have been the actual, you know, woman saw it in half instead of the, you know, split box with two women inside it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, at that, I'm going to reach into my bag for a bit of water and one of my uh, one of my healing pulses. And I'm going to mix it up and just lightly apply smears to both. Yeah, these are going to sting a little bit, I say, as I apply it. But if you leave them be, it's going to it's gonna make you a little woozy. But thankfully, you've got a little bit of the, the good stuff running through you, so it should take care of that. But uh, yeah, probably by tomorrow morning, you should be feeling a lot better. It still stings a little bit, but not as bad as it would if it was applied to open flush. I mean, I just had a bunch of rabies shots. Yeah, the poultice isn't the worst. I've ow. I, I, I warned you a little bit. Yeah, but it's going to do the job. Well, thanks. All right, I think we're going to make my way downstairs. I know Valor needed to talk to me about something, and yeah, I have an apology to figure out for sunrise. Like I said, be honest before thrive. Just 
speak from the heart and don't try and work around it. Just let it out. Okay, thanks. I think I'll do that. You have a good head clearing session up here. Yep. As soon as the charcoal is done, I'm going to, well, actually, I don't know. I even know we'll be here that long. Did he set up a small batch or like a big ass kiln? Yeah, some roughly like one meter wide by one meter tall. Oh, that that'll be done in a few. That'll be done in several hours. Something that small. Um, yeah, I gain say by dark he should be able to harvest charcoal from it. get the charcoal already and well at the very least we'll be leaving valor with uh, a mostly functional forge and i think uh i think there's even a workbench not great but it'll do for our basic repairs i know i need to work that ding out of my sword um i mean you could try but i'm not the one you want to talk to about that that's kind of Sunrise's department. Or maybe All the more reason to work that out with her. Well, I mean, it could be a good way to get started on, uh, you know, patching things up. Not a bad idea. Thanks. And with that, he'll uh, go ahead and uh, nod and make his way down the steps. And with that, Nyota will go back to looking out over the parapet. And, uh, yeah, actually just crush the pack of smokes and leave it sitting there for a minute as I... Uh, Take some time to drink a little water and roll up a, a joint of my own. Uh, hit me with a perception check, would you? That's th three degrees, and uh, yeah, I know that there's a uh, there's a uh, an interstellar call that's been on hold for a couple months. Oh, I was just going to say that as you twirl around up here, you eventually see off in the distance the location that Medicinal was referring to. Ah, yes, the settlement. Um, you recognize some of the colors. That's a Philly Scout encampment. Huh. Well... Interesting. And with that, I think it's time to pass the uh, pass the torch on to Chifundo. Okay. Um, I suppose we'll take that interstellar call next rotation. Uh, Chifundo. Yo. Uh, is Chifundo still on power save, or would the commotion of people making their way upstairs and downstairs and upstairs and downstairs. Uh, has he snapped to or is he still just a glowing pig safe point? <laughs> <laughs> um, still, still power saving, I think. Okay. Um, Shifundo, roll me shamanism. Be, uh, uh, just keep your hands near the dice. You're going to be rolling some things if this passes. Well, if this passes, it, no, that passes enough. Only ten degrees. Yeah, that's 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 only ten whole ass degrees of success. All right. So as you do when you close your eyes and let your mind wander you begin to expand and let your senses wander. It's always hard to tell 
the the direct location of things that you find this way as up and down left and right side to side these things stop having meaning in this space down is as much a concept as green is here but you sense nearby that there is life a considerable amount of life and life of different kinds simple life complex life aggressive feral and hostile life perverse life and natural life as well as in a couple of cases genuine unlife this is an incredibly alive mm. location. Okay. Are you going to focus on any of that or simply try to drink in as much general information as you can? Um, I guess I'd start general and if anything in particular catches my atten attention, kind of focus in on it. Okay. Um, give me uh, five spirit affinity rolls. Uh, as this relates to life, you uh, are allowed to roll with your uh, trait bonus. Cool. So how many did you say? Five. Five, okay. A, a literal handful. All successes. Oh, very nice. Good rolling. Damn, that plus two bonus really saved your ass. Uh, plus two? Uh, I, get a, I get a plus one for my for our life spirits. Oh, I thought it was a plus two. Still, that, that plus one. Just coming in clutch. Yep. All right. Um, okay. Um, it's very clear that the the land around this area is healing. There are some hot spots here or there where you can sense the unnatural twisting energies of Balefire, but. For the most part, Welcome this grove is very alive. Um, but as well, you can tell that there is a very, very, very close and very dense population of ponies um, who, as well, seem to be rather healthy. There are different quirks in life here or there, but there is there is a lot of life amongst them as well. Um Further away, though, close, but further, you sense perversions of life, places where there are hiccups in the flow, places where there seem to be mild augments of balefire or, you know, other necromantic energies. Um, not a lot, not not anything truly substantial, nothing worse than a case of wonder glue, but it's there and it's unmistakable at this point in your career. Uh, there are a few who are, who seem to be sinks or, or, or who seem to be beacons, who seem to be giving off the most of this, but there is a, a definite distinction between the pair. Um, But beyond that, it does not appear to be outwardly aggressive or hostile life. It does not seem to be something seeking you, nor does it seem to be something that has altered its day-to-day -day actions and activities. As far as you can tell, you 
are still able to travel with anonymity in this land. Okay. Um, I guess first I'd like to... I guess examine a little closer the ponies. All right. Um, probably even actually astral project out in that direction. Okay. As you make your way towards the the group of ponies, there is it's not a it's not a fence, it's not quite a gate, but it feels like you're trying to move your way through a solid wall of water. Huh, okay. I need um, another spirit affinity roll, this time without the bonus. Uh, that is a fail. Not a quick fail, but it is a fail. All right. Um, you can try again, then. Uh, it's definitely giving you a hard time. Uh, that's although, a pass. Although I think the it giving you a hard time is more the jarring sensation of walking into something. Um okay. You render through a small spot and you're able to slip in. And on the other side of this barrier, uh, let me see. Okay. Um, on the other side of this barrier, you step into a nursery. Um, there are at least uh, a dozen cradles that you can see, all of which seem to have, you know, very young, uh, if not newborn foals. There is very clinical and sterile lighting, but you can tell that this was not the original design of this room. You're unsure how, you just have a gut sensation that this place was converted. Um, but there do not appear to be deformities amongst any of them. Four limbs, two eyes, a nose, a mouth, ears, and a tail. Some with horns, a few with wings. There even appears to be a zoni or two. Although, normal Zoni, not a bubblegum pink Zoni. <laughs> um, and much less pronounced uh, than your stripes or Nyota's. It's very faint, almost as if it's just a holdover. Okay. There is a single attending, um, a single attending worker in here, a an older mare who seems to just be moving between each of them, uh, a clipboard held aloft in magic as she scribbles something down, passing by each passing by each of them, uh, occasionally stopping to nudge or prod at uh, the full inside the crib. Doesn't pay you any mind, doesn't seem to notice you're there, and at one point in time walks through you, stopping and shuddering a little as she keeps going. <laughs> um, as she walks past through me, um, am I able to work out what she's making notes of? I... Give me a persuade. No, uh, you're seeing with 
Give me an intelligence check. All right. Um, as you focus your senses on the clipboard, it kind of orient, reorienting around her a bit. It takes you a minute to focus, and essentially your brain has to play uh, catch-up as there is a slight bit of delay between information. The words parse back to you, and you're able to read the equestrian, and while there are a litany of names down one side, it seems to be a chart divided into categories. The one that she is going down right now is visual check. So just generic, general kind of condition of the polls kind of checks? Um... There is, she seems to be making, um, she seems to be making just a simple letter notation in there. Um, although at the very, very top, there is one that has a D. The rest are all A's, however. Okay. Um, I presume, is there like an observation window into the room or is there just like the door? There is an observation room or there is an observation window, but you don't see anyone um, on the other side. Okay. Um, I'm going to walk into the observation room and then look to see if there's a door out of there. Um, there is, there is also a, there's a receptionist desk, but there's no one at it. And it seems that the devices there have, the, the devices as well as the light have all been shut off. The room is, uh, dim. Uh, there's a light, that, or there's a door that most likely leads out into a hall. Uh, or at the very least leads out of here and into an area with light, given the fact that there is illumination streaming in. Okay, um, I'm going to stick my head through the door and take a look either side to see if there's any activity. Okay, uh, as you shunt your head through the, the door, there's that uh, returning sensation of forcing your head through a wall of water. Is it... Is it more difficult than um, previous places that I've tried to do this through? Um, it seems to be the the initial hurdle seemed to be getting in. Um, every physical barrier you've crossed through inside of here has had a similar resistance. But uh, yeah, you can attempt to make a check on that if you would like. Yeah, I'd like to see if there's some kind of warding or something that I'm passing through. Okay, make me... Uh, let me see. Alright, I... I think I just have to call this uh, shamanism, but just roll it at a minus 50. Okay. <laughs> but only just. Roll 20 giveth. Roll 20 taketh away. Yep. Sorry, Hetty, for Stealing that one off from you. No, no, admittedly, <laughs> he stole it from himself earlier. Oh, okay, fair. Uh, um, it's clearly some kind of warding that these places have. Either it's baked into the walls, or it's something set up on the ground, but these places were clearly designed to keep out peeping shamans. Or at the very least, make it a bit slower. Um, although, to some degree, some of it is just attempting to phase through a solid object. Okay. 
Uh, but, although yeah, yes, uh, the although yes, the effect is about ninety five percent magical in nature. Yeah, but obviously with that, I've got no idea just what that warding is or anything like that. Okay. Um, yeah, that, that's close enough to figure out that there is warding. That it is you know something that seems to mostly only affect you when you are spiritual, and there are places that are stronger than others. But yeah. Oh. So, yeah, I stick my head through the door and take a look left and right to see what's going off in the, what I presume is going to be a corridor. It is, in fact, a corridor. Uh, down either side of the corridor, there are um, all, but, all but two. There are ponies in... Uh, what appear to be lab coats and scrubs. Uh, the other two are... It, they're pre-war clothing, but to call them street clothes would be an insult to the, the design choice. Um, but there are two who are not dressed in some kind of medical gear, who seem to be quickly hustling from uh, one side of the hall to the other. The rest of the ponies are moving at a much more um there's still a sense of urgency but it's a much, much less brisk pace okay um so the the two that are in kind of casual clothing are they are they just seemingly in a hurry or are they trying to avoid ponies or no, it just seems like the two of them are in a hurry to get someplace. Um, they are mostly trying to avoid the others, although there is a near mishap as they almost uh, bowl through one another. Oh, uh, good night, Medicinal. Take care, Barna. Good night. Good night, Barna. I um, mean, it is 10 to 6 here. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you uh, they just kind of bolt, they just kind of make their way from one side to the other, and at the end of the hallway, they stop hard and turn and go right. I'm going to follow them. Okay. Um, so you pull yourself out the rest of the way. It's much easier once your head is extended through. Um, okay. You're just going to keep pace floating after him? Yeah, pretty much. Um, obviously, if I hear them say anything to each other, I'll listen into it. You know, see if I can get any idea of what they're up to. But it just seems a bit odd, you know? As they continue hurrying forward, you you have a sensation that there is something you're missing that you should be able to detect, but you can't, given the fact that you are a spirit. Uh, as you watch them round yet another corner, you can hear a growing din of noise. Turning the last corner, it becomes clear, uh, at least a bit more clear, why they are running. Um, standing before you, is a very large, well-lit, well-maintained mess hall. There are dozens upon dozens of ponies, uh, some in scrubs, some in coats, some in overhauls, others dressed in that simple casual wear, but all of them appear to be, you know, even those who are in slightly dirty overalls and work, uh, work jumpers, all of them appear to be relatively well maintained, well groomed. Um, there is a long cafeteria line where uh, clearly it's you know a little bit wilted from uh, what might be hydroponics, but there are vegetables that are you know served onto plates, um, various mashed. Uh, proteins and grains, but there are clearly things that look like grown produce. Um, some ponies have glasses of water, others have cups of something, but there's a large amount of them down there, and it does not appear that any of them seem to be fighting or competing for food. 
Okay. Um... Oh, there are some young and some old as well. Uh, um, hmm. Can I hear any of the conversation? Uh, they're all just talking about nothing. Some are talking about work, some are talking about crushes, some are talking about... Um, well, it's likely a sport, but they haven't named it yet, only referring to plays and some of the action. Um, most of them seem to be talking about science, but for the most part, they're just eating quietly, routinely. Okay. Um, I wonder we'll all sort of turn around and step back out of the room again. Um, and just generally start looking in sort of rooms al along the, the corridor that he's in, sort of heading back in the direction he came from, just sort of seeing if any of the rooms contains anything interesting or anything that might indicate more about what this place is. Uh, there's a few rooms down this hall, but there were more back the way that you came. Um, you clearly recognize a couple nearby as being uh, bathrooms, but aside from that, none of the doors are marked. Or, well, are marked in anything that has any kind of you know proper indication to you. Okay. Um... Do I pass anything resembling a main entrance as I'm wandering through? You have not. Okay, then I'm going to... You keep... did pass what looked to be um, a sort of uh, lift, elevator, stair area. But that was a little bit back. Okay, I'm going to head towards that and, like I say, just keep poking my head in rooms as I'm going, just curious to try and work out, like say more about the purpose of this place. There are lots of room. There are lots of rooms that you encounter and poke your head in. Um, what is your medicine score? Um, Thirty one. So I'm not terrible. Oh, higher than 25. Okay, well, what is your chemistry score? Uh, also 31. Oh, okay, you got a decent end. Um, all right, uh, as you poke your head into some of the rooms, some of them uh, seem to be physicians' offices uh, or examination rooms. Um, some of them seem to just be uh, processing labs of sorts. Some of them appear to be larger research stations. Um, a few have specialized machinery and equipment. Um, but each of the rooms appears to have, uh, aside from a few, appears to have different room with different different rooms with different tech in them, all designed for different things. But generally air, air, airing towards medical purposes um aside from a couple they all clearly uh aside from a few which you're a bit out in the uh, a bit in the dark on most of them seem to have some way very obviously upon looking at it where it would interface with um uh, an equestrian um in that case yeah i'm gonna head towards the lifts or stairs. Do I pass any signs intent that designed to sort of point the way around the building? No, but you do pass by some propaganda. Okay, I'm going to take a look at that. 
Um, there are assorted uh, pre-war propaganda posters as well. God damn it! Of course, you make your way all the way down here. Like the only night I'm missing that fucking note, uh, that thing of sticky notes. Um, some of them are faded. Some of them are very, are, you know, are the very clearly Pinkie Pie is watching you forever type things. Uh, but some are a bit more nuanced, and some seem to be very uh, specific to this location. Um, God damn it. I, is that it? No, nope, that's not it. Yeah, I actually have what's written on them. I just don't have it in front of me. Because, of course, you're the one... You motherfucker, you want purple. Um, is that it? You, you got this moon. <laughs> well, uh, no, I've I've had the, uh, the note page on the mini fridge in front of me for, like, over a year. It's like, all right, it's time to use it. Where'd it go? <laughs> I'll do that quick question. Do yeah, I have yeah. a do I have a sense in which direction I am from my body? No. That does not sound good. Oh no, that okay. Meta level. I'm ninety percent sure of where I am. Okay. <laughs> On a meta level. Okay. Um, yeah, on a meta level, you can actively choose your, you, you don't have the sensation that you can't re recoil. Um, so you can actively choose to end your, um, your projection. Um, you'll, you might, depending on how it's done, you might take a little bit of non-lethal, but, uh, you can just actively end the projection and you'll be back in your body, but yeah, no, you're not really sure which direction it is. It kind of feels all around you at the moment. Okay. Um, so, some of the propaganda is more nuanced to this particular location. Yep. Uh, there's a, you know, a lot of things like, you know, do your part, um, you know, be careful, you know, Every, uh, everyone has to ration stuff like that. Um, there's, you know, definitely, you know, lots of recycle, reduce consumption, general, general things, but there's a lot more slightly sinister ones. Um, and yeah, there is a lot of uh, 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 the, the equestrian war propaganda posters, but unlike the ones that you see out in the wasteland, these are, I mean, they're a little bit frayed at the edges, but for the most part, these are, brand new the, the the colors are still fairly crisp and vibrant sharp um, yeah um there is even on one of them that you passed it actually has an intact corner like it is still pointy it looks like you would poke your hoof and bleed with it uh -huh. cool okay so say i get to the lift stairwell yes can I roll something to intuit that I want to go up? Yes. What would you like me to roll? Because, like I say, I'm working off of meta knowledge here. I don't. I want I to... want you to roll spirit affinity. This does not have the bonus from life. All right. Able to. <laughs> um, as you you know, look over this lift device, your your soul is able to grasp the fact that this is designed to make one go up and down. So, using this, you are able to pick the you are able to utilize the concept of up and down to lower or to raise or descend yourself. I'm... However. Sorry? I was going to say, however, if you choose to descend, you don't really have precise control. So <laughs> you might hit the lava layer. Just remember, lava starts forming at Y minus 15. <laughs> I get oh, that joke. Yeah. Yay. Um... Hmm. Uh, I don't suppose there's a nearby. There's a what? 
Is there a stairwell nearby? You know, emergency stairs kind of thing? Uh, yeah, uh, next to this, actually. I'm going to go and also, stare and then follow the stairs up. <laughs> I was going to say, also, they are not labeled as emergency stairs. They are just labeled as stairwell. Yeah, well, uh, although it does actually have, in case... Uh, it does actually have um, the the requisite fire information on there. Um, it's... The- do, to, do not use the lift in case of emergency. Yeah, do not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Uh, report up to this area. Um, on this level, it actually seems to have you report to the mess hall. Um, but at the top of the stairs, it seems that there's a, a fire escape or something. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go to the top of the stairs or to the, the highest point in the stairs where there's a door and then kind of stick my head through. Okay. Um, you take the stairs until you can no longer take the stairs. Uh, as you poke your head out, you appear on what seems to be a loading level. Um, there is not a civilian populace here. There are some ponies working, but there don't appear to be many. And most and the the thing of most note is the fact that the roof is domed. Not universally, but in parts it is domed. Okay. Um what other access points are there to this space? Um you came out from so that would be and then um there are corridors that lead left and uh, left or right, uh, and there's seems to be an opening that leads straight out away from you uh, that has uh, industrial uh, colorations and zone er, and uh, signs around it. Off to, if you head in that direction as well, you can see what appears to be some kind of door holding closet or something. Do I have a sense of how many levels have gone up? Uh, You're not entirely sure how many levels you've gone up, but you can sense the abundant life of nature much closer than you could before. Now that I'm here, I'm assuming that there's going to be less interference. Can I get a feed on where my body is now? Uh, yes, it is near to you. And um, not quite straight ahead, but straight enough. Is it in a similar direction as to the uh, the access you were just mentioning? You have to come out and go squiggle ways a little bit, but yes, you can uh, essentially divine a line from where you are to where your body should tether itself to. Okay, I'm going to follow that access uh, that access you mentioned. You were saying. I was going to say, are you going, to the, uh, going in the area of that industrial loading zone, or are you just following the tether back to your meat suit? Uh, the loading zone to begin with. Okay. Um, the, seri- the ceiling here is uh, high and domed. Um, give me an intelligence check, would you? Uh, and on the... Well, it's on your right, but it's on the door's uh, left. There appears to be a large garage... Okay. <laughs> there appears to be... Nope, you're fine. You just don't uh, recognize the shape of the roof. Um, there appears to be a large uh, garage door type area. Um, and uh, all it states on there is just supply. That is the only, you know, indication on this door. Uh, I'm going to try and stick my head through it. All right. Uh, It is one of those rolling metal doors. Um, It is about 
10 feet or uh, 10 feet from side to side. And as you stick your head through it, there are, uh, hold me to the exact description. Yeah. Yep. Um, it appears to just be a some kind of uh, industrial storage crate. Um, they are most of them are made of wood or metal, and upon each of them, it's not on the same side, so you can tell that it's only marked on a, uh, on one of the sides. Um, but on each of the boxes, there is a single symbol that makes you stop a moment. It is the same symbol on this door, on the other stable door. These are all property of the project. Um, I pres is there no other ways in or out of this particular space? The room that you're in, or yeah, uh, yeah, no. This is this is uh, very clearly um, like a storage closet type area. You just put things in here and close door. Cool. Um, steps away from it. Um, I'm sorry. I've getting tired of my brain's getting a bit hazy was it's there fine any, as soon as was you there any other access points in this general area that i can see i mean if you turn and path in the general direction of your body you can see what appears to be a large bulkhead door oh i'm absolutely heading towards that i think that's what i was looking for okay um as you get close to that you About about fifty feet out from the door, uh, the option or the choice to continue walking forward or just snap back to your body is made for you, uh, as it feels like someone uh, released the line on a uh, an uncoiled tape measure. The thing snaps back and uh, brings itself back in in one central moment, and you go from walking towards a door to staring at the inside of the red door. The inside, okay. Uh, my, go back to my body then. Yeah, essentially you quite literally snap back to reality. Yeah. Cool. Um, blinks a few times as the, as his sort of glowing body glow fades back to his normal kind of not glowing state. Um, sunrise. Yes. I think I've just been in the lab downstairs. Blink, 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 blink. Normally I would have 150 questions, but this does not surprise me in the slightest. I have gotten so used to your spiritual shenaniganry, I think I may even be able to do some of it myself. So what'd you find? So, beyond this red door is a massive bulkhead. No, no. You're, uh, you're staring at the red door that led in and out of the, uh, the keep. The, the door is behind you. It's the yellow. Got you. So yeah, the, yeah, the yellow the, location the... leads into a... Um, Oh, he's into the quintessential stable door opening. Yeah. So the main door is warded against me. Like, heavily warded. As soon as I got near it, the my tether just snapped and snapped me back into my body. 
Um, rest of the facility much more lightly watered against me. Um, I will warn you, there is a lot of ponies down there. A lot. Um, I found a lot of medical equipment and they seem to be they seem to be taking care of newborns down there. A couple of them are even Sonys. Um, I don't know if it was just the floor I originally found myself on, but lots of kind of medical equipment, I think. Looks like it might have been medical equipment. Um, or, yeah, lots of lab coats, overalls. I think they're growing fresh food down there as well. Well, I suppose I should go uh, get everyone ready to see if we can open the door. Hmm. Um, door leads into a large loading bay, I think. Some kind of large space for moving things around in, I think. Let's uh, finish lunch and get down there, shall we? Yes, let's. All right, um, so Sketchy, uh, Hetty, uh, thank you guys for the bits. Sketchy, thank you for buying a bunch of gift subs for people. Um, Pony Chick and Frazier, thank you guys for the host. Zabin, thank you for the host. Uh, let's see here. Sketchy, you're like, again, one of like three people who chooses the tier two. Everybody else is either tier three or tier one. Uh, Violet Aura, thank you for the... Nope, that's from yesterday's stream. I'm dumb. Uh, Linzabi and Sketchy, thank you guys for the tips. And Jackalopy, welcome to the Army of Fiora. I hope you enjoy your stay. Uh, and I hope that you have had a wonderful time tonight, guys. Um, in the meantime... I'm Fiora. I've been playing Wondering Sunrise. Hi. Um. Yeah. Somebody else say good night. I am Adagio Rose. I play Nyota, and I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your evening. Hey, I'm Hedy. Um, I've been playing Gerchifundo, uh, and yeah, that was interesting. So, good night, everyone. Hi, I'm That Pony, and I play Mythic Blade. Have a good evening, everyone. A new seeker is after Fiora's Ooh. heart and attention. Bobby and I play the voice of Twitty. Everybody's favorite alien. Bomb color. Newspaper swat. Come on, what? I've not said it all session. Okay, thank that is for, entirely thank you for fair. for the tip at the end, Sketchy. I like how you tried to swipe the hat from Lanzabi and came up just short. Oh, he didn't get the hat? Lanzabi still got it by... by, by I'm resetting the, the HP again at the end of the week, but Lanzabi still got it. How, how much? By about 14 bucks. Okay. <laughs> anyway. I'm uh, Moon. I've been the GM, and you've listened to me channel my ADHD for four straight hours. And it's been great. Uh, oh, and... right. I'm. It... You're just saying that because Dice Thirst. In the meantime, uh, this is your last chance to pre-order your copy of Book 3. Uh, pre-order is the only way I can guarantee you a copy because I'm taking all the unpre-ordered copies to Everfree Northwest. We actually are renting a car and driving up there. So if you don't pre-order it, no promises. In the meantime, uh, yeah, let me, let's go raid somebody.
raided Maddie last night, so we're gonna raid Blue's S tonight. We're not gonna give him any other reason other than we can. Good night. Let's see, she's gonna give a steal for the last second. A new seeker is after. Oh my god, I pressed the raid button and he.